So here come the dogs away from the stoppage again. Brown getting a past a couple onto Harding. Hand pass out here to Noah Bradshaw wearing the 12 jersey today. Goes inside forward 50. Petey made a contest. Tyson down there. Flying it to Ryan Bruce. Right foot kick tied up against the boundary. Hugs it. Lands on centre wing. There's been a throw here called against, I think it was Dylan Conway. And it stopped the Yarrawonga Pigeons from going inside 50. Free kick here to the dogs. Still one goal apiece. Almost halfway gone in this opening term for A-grade oils and batteries. Wonderful switch from Morrison. Finds our man Spatiri. Kick to centre wing. One-on-one -on -one there between Kitching and Einspawn. Falls the way of Greenhill. Inside forward 50. Down there, Beatty. A wonderful marker. Mawson's concrete mark of the day. Inside 50 quickly, and he'll line up 30 out slide angle. It's a beautiful kick in. He just uh, protected the drop of the ball and used all of the experience and a little bit of muscle on Tyson to uh, nudge him out and uh, take an easy chest mark in the end. Wonderful ball movement all the way down the Martin Park Oval from the Dogs. Good switch from Morrison onto Spateri and Nick Beattie. He was a late in last week. Of course, Wodonga born and bred. Went out and played a bit of footy at Kiwa. And has sprayed that one to the right-hand side through for a minor score. The Dogs 1-1-7. The Pigeons one straight six on our Paulie's Corner Cafe scoreboard. Yeah, and a disappointing miss there from Nick Beattie. But what is really positive with Wodonga is their movement off the halfback was fantastic. The foot skills for Spateri and the one-handed pickup for Oli. Really positive signs for Wodonga early, Panda. Willie Wheeler tight in the contest. Beautiful hand pass to Urquhart. Right foot kick inside 50 to Williams. Don't give it off, Leroy. Go back and have a shot. Had yes. Father Gill on, didn't he? Long. He lines up and he kicks it to the top of the goal square. It was a beautiful kick, well weighted. And taking the mark down there was Braden Coburn, dishing them off Lee Williams. And Coburn will go back and put this one through Chris Mitchell, 10 metres out directly in front. Well, he's nearly the smallest player on the ground and took a great overhead mark, started behind his opponent, but... Uh, Read the ball really well. It was a nice, deep, uh, penetrating kick from Williams. So Coburn comes in, makes no mistake. The Pigeons with the last two on 3 and on m Live. They go to two straight 12. The Dogs 1-1-7 one, one, on our Paulie's Corner Cafe scoreboard. Dan Vaccaro around the grounds. Yeah, absolutely. Around the grounds uh, for round 18. Uh, Wangaratta Rovers 10 to North Albury yet to score. Murderford 2-2-14 two, two, to Wodonga Raiders. Zero goals, one. Lavington, one goal straight, six to Aubrey's 12. So far on around the grounds and a really good finish there by Yarra. They've kicked two straight so far and really positive start for Wodonga, but Yarra just hitting them where it hurts at the moment. So a five-point margin here in this opening term for A-grade oils and batteries. A wonderful day right across the region. Finals like weather, September weather. And a free kick here. To the Wodonga Bulldogs in the middle of the ground. It's Great young. tackle from Nimmo. He just uh, got, uh, uh, I think it was one of the pigeons uh, holding the ball. He goes inside 50. The kick didn't match the effort, though. And empty head Pendergast takes a wonderful intercept mark. He's a good young kid, is Ned. There's no way he likes that nickname. No, either. he does indeed. Have spoken to him. Lovell at half back. A massive paddock. Beautiful kick out wide. Great ball movement here from the Pigeons. Far side, this is Wheeler. We know what a wonderful kick inside 50 he is as well. And look at that on cue. Finding Fothergill, probably just too far out to score for Nick. He's been called to play on now and just sits to the hot spot. And why not when you got big Leroy down there? Gibbons at the fall of the footy. It looks like we're going to have a stoppage inside 50, 15 metres out from Yarrawonga's goal. They've kicked the last two, Chris, and they look dangerous when they go inside 50. Yeah, they do. And lucky for Deneen just popping into that hole there to make uh, a two-man up against Williams. Thrown back up. Five-point lead to the Pigeons. Halfway stage of the opening term for A-grade oils and batteries think, here on 3 and E's on m Life. I think the biggest problem at the moment is the half-forward link up with Wodonga there. Defensively and actively not working hard enough. Mathy. Aggressively tackled to the ground by Conway, and we got be free. a third stoppage. No, oh. dump tackle. Free kick to Wodonga, Josh Mathy. Yeah, Nash Broughton was the umpire who gave that away. Off the football, in fact. Morrison marks in the defensive pocket, breaks away straight away, and once again, as we spoke about, breaking down at half forward for Wodonga. Masters taking the intercept mark, aggressively comes inboard. Looking for Irvine. He finds it. Wants to play on straight away. Kicks to an open 50. Wilson 
Not able to take the mark. In fact, it was Koopman. Just dropped it at the last second, and we got a stoppage 40 out from Yarrawonga's goal. They lead by five, Dan Vaccaro. Yeah, they absolutely do. And the Wodonga defence is holding up really well. What he's breaking down, he's just the half forward line and leaving too much space in the middle for Yarra to run into. 16 to pass for the Macca's time clock. Matt Wilson, he's such a good user. Not on that occasion. Chopping it off there was Gibbons. So Yarrawonga with the press on here. Inside 50 numbers, Dan. Uh, eight apiece at the moment, Panda, on the 40 winks of that sheet. Gibbons sends a high one. Back inside. Williams not able to mark. Out the back trying to get a foot to it. I think was Fothergill, and it's through for a rush behind for Yarrawonga in the end. They go to 2 1 13. The Bulldogs 1 1 7 on the Paulie's Corner Cafe scoreboard. Yeah, really good. Uh Play there by Nick Fothergill. He's up to five disposals as well. He looks really dangerous for Yarra across that half forward. Something that Wodonga need help with. Sam Jewell asked to play on straight away. Must have been touched, was it? Because it looked like a clear mark. It did indeed. Spateri with that beautiful ball use that he highlighted in pre-game. Finds Zach Harding, the young fella. Spending a bit of time in the ruck at the minute. Gives it back to Spateri. He was crunched as he kicked it. And once again, Lee Masters. How many intercepts has he had this opening term, oh, Chris is. Mitchell? A few, at least three, I reckon. Yeah, he's absolutely dominating Lee Masters. He is indeed. The kicking long, kicking it down his throat, though, making it easy for him at yep. the moment. A wonderful switch of the football, and here's Braden Coburn, centre wing. Wind just starting to pick up a little bit here at Martin Park. We can hear on our effects, Mike. Matt Wilson goes by hand. Looking for Bradshaw under a bit of trouble. Harding, this is good pressure here from Yarrawonga. They've won a free kick for holding the ball here. That's going to go the way of Ben Kennedy. 55 from home. Called to play on. Goes inside 50. Looking for Williams. Not able to mark. The Dogs defence mop up. Spateri goes back to Ma. And he finds Bradshaw. Still deep in defence. Ticking up towards the 20-minute mark of this opening term. The Pigeons 2-1-13, lead the Dogs 1-1-7. They've got a good press on here, Yarrawonga. Morrison's got this. Goes short to Cactus Brown. Still at half-back. Looks in board and finds Mathy. His number's Dan Vaccaro. Uh, this will be his fifth disposal, Panda, and one goal. Yeah, you said it before. They've got a great press on, and they're just forcing the turnover at this, sort of, this spot on the ground here. So this next kick from... Uh, from Noah is really important. I think they need to chip their way through this. I suppose Pateri, his numbers, Dan? Yeah, Spitter's had six touches so far, so he started the game really good, and his kicking has just been top-notch. He's probably going at 100% at the moment. Jules kick wasn't great. It was an aggressive option looking back in the middle of the ground, and Yarrawonga swoop on it. Fothergill hand passes it to Williams. He was grabbed straight away by Morrison. Wanted a free kick, did Williams. He thought the tackle went on with it. Here's Ainsworth pulling the trigger and... Kicking once again back into the middle of the ground. They want the corridor, and it allows the Yarrawonga defence in Maury to take an intercept mark. He goes out towards Gibbons. Right foot kick to half forward. Fothergill, always dangerous, delivering the footy inside 50, finding Dylan Conway. Great mark. Tied up against the boundary. He's right up against the paint. Take a good effort here, Chris O. Yeah, I think he's looking to pass it off, Panda, but uh, it was a beautiful mark. He just read, it, read the flight of the ball really well, but... Right against the boundary, um, plenty of dogs numbers uh, in the square there too, so uh, you might see a rush behind if this one uh, goes high to the square. Making up the big three, the new big three apparently on our scorecard. So Dylan Conway, drop punt effort, out of bounds on the full. No score whatsoever for the Pigeons. 2-1-13 over the dogs, 1-1-7. It's still a six-point lead on the Paulie's Corner Cafe scoreboard. As we go to Dan Vaccaro on the four, we'll hold that Dan Vaccaro because that exiting to kick out of defence for the Dogs was a shocker from Ma. And Lee Williams, he's the recipient of this free kick. Very tight up against the boundary. Reckon he's got this one in him, Dan? Yeah, I think he does. So he runs around here as a drop punt, kicks it goal bound, and I reckon he's put it out on the full, has he? He has. He has. Bit of sloppy play here at the moment. Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Not a great game to watch uh, from the boundary either, <laughs> boys, at the moment. But uh, the Pigeons have got a great press on. They, they've got no one over halfway, so really hard for the Dogs to get out of defence. you got a time and forward half stat for us, Dan? I wish I did, mate, because yeah, it'll, be, it'll be crazy. I, but, yeah, I, I agree. But I think I don't mind what Wodonga are doing. It's just that Yarra are so good that they just lose their patience with chipping it around and, and trying to work their way up slowly. 
Masters. Looking for Fronfelder. Spateri with him for trouble. Mathy. No one to kick to. Wins it for the Dogs and just kicks it to a paddock and it's all pigeons. Irvine. He could bake a cake if he wanted. He had that much time. Goes short to Pendergast and the switch is on here for the pigeons at half back. Fires it across to Lovell in his own D50. Beautiful kick out wide. Look at that. Fothergill. Sorry, that's Einspawn mark. Center wing. Looks inboard. It allows Mathy to apply a bit of pressure there on Fronfelder. The umpire said, Josh, you punched his arms. Fronfelder plays on straight away. Runs to about 55 metres. Kicks to the hot spot. Williams flew really early and he's given away a free kick. It's going to be a free kick here to Matty Wilson. They're peppering the inside 50s at the moment. Chris Mitchell and the Dogs, they're holding on. Yeah, they are. They've got plenty of numbers behind the ball. Wilson, um, Charlie Morrison being pretty good. Got a couple of little fists in there. Uh, just spoiling that at Wilson when he's uh, at his peak. So here's Wilson running out of defence, bouncing it to himself. On to Mimo. Here's Greenhill, an open 50. The Dogs against the traffic. Go inside. Spateri up against Fronfelder trying to apply those little soccer skills. Here's a chance for the Dogs and Tyson. Right place, right time, winning it. It looks like Yarrawonga are going to run out of defence. 2-1-13 over the Dogs, 1-1-7. It's a six-point ball game. 22 played in the opening term, Dan Vaccaro. Yeah, and it's really disappointing that Wodonga couldn't get a score out of it because that was the first time they went inside 50 in about five minutes with even numbers. Usually it's outnumbered by Yarra, which has been disappointing, but their defence is holding up brilliantly, I feel, Wodonga. It's just their attacking um, prowess going forward is really struggling at the moment. Wiley, his numbers early stages. Uh, Mark Wiley's had only the three disposals, so a quiet start for him. Fronfelder, beautiful kick inboard. Kicks it to Maury. Fakes his hand pass. Fires it out wide. So here's Gibbons. His kick inside 50 was just to the space of the drop zone of Casey, who wasn't on the right page as him, Chris Mitchell. And we've got a boundary throw in inside 50 here for the Pigeons. No, probably could have gone long, I reckon, but... Uh not to be, going to be a throw-in in a pretty good spot, but I just can't get much space here in the forward 50. We've only had the three goals in this opening term. Coburn kicked the last goal at the 13th minute mark, so we've gone 10 minutes without a goal. Yarrawonga have owned the football in this opening term. Ball back on centre wing. Maury off to Irvine. We've got a whistle here and a free kick to Maury, who was held without the football. It's going to go against Noah Bradshaw. He's had a really good second half for the year, has Logan Morey. Dan Vaccaro, hasn't he? He has. He's a really good player, and he's really important for Yarrawonga. And, yeah, he definitely stands out with that hair, that's for sure. Quarter time to end what was an interesting opening term. It started well for the Dogs. They kicked the first through Josh Mathy. Yarrawonga have kicked the last two goals. It's a six-point lead at quarter time. And on the air, Paulie Corner Cafe scoreboard, 2-1-13 Yarrawonga. The Dogs 1-1-7. We'll be back after this on r &M Live. You won't miss a thing. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a crumbed barramundi fillet served with chips and dill hollandaise from just $22. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Pain or injury can stop you from living life to the fullest. Aubrey Wodonga Private Hospital specialises in advanced orthopaedic services and offers a full range of care from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation. Get back to the life you love with our support.
Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where students come first. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. GoTafe is hiring and we want you on our team. Flexibility, professional development, generous remuneration and a staff wellbeing program are just a few of the great benefits we offer. If you have a passion for your skill or qualification and you're looking for real work-life balance, then GoTafe is the place for you. GoTafe is leading. Inspiring. Hands-on. Flexible. Fabulous. We have dozens of trainer positions and corporate roles open right now. Get in touch today. AY, we're your home of live sport. Every weekend we bring you the best live broadcasts of the Ovens and Murray football and netball. Listen this weekend on your radio or the 2AY app. I'm here at the Martin Park in Wodonga and it's a six point lead to Yarrawonga. Bit of a pedestrian opening term I would say Dan Vaccaro. 13 plays 7 we're going to go to our man, Dan Vaccaro, who is on our 40-week stat sheet. What were some of the uh, highlights in that opening term? And, of course, our Optus caught us best. Yeah, a bit pedestrian. It's probably an understatement, I reckon, Panda. It was a little bit boring, but I think that's what Wodonga want. I think they're holding up really well defensively, but I think going forward is a massive issue at the moment. They've got no link up from their half forwards to full forwards, so that's got to be improved. Sure, JT is relaying that at the moment, but the inside 50 count is reasonably even, surprisingly. So it's 10 inside 50s, Wodonga 13 for Yarra. Um, so a decent start. Josh Mathy, he's had six disposals. Matt Wilson's been their best player by far at the moment, I feel. Nine disposals already. And Noel spatier has been very good off half-back. Almost at that wing sort of position, that quarter, he's had the seven disposals. For Yarrawonga, Nick Fothergill's been their best. He's had eight disposals. Seems to be everywhere. He gets up the ground better than most players in the competition. Um, and Lee Masters off half-back has had the seven disposals. And probably six of them have been marks, Panda. Chris Mitchell, uh, who's been at the respective huddles. What were the messages at quarter time? Yeah, I didn't get to Jordan Taylor at Wodonga, but I did have a good listener, Stevie J, in the Arawonga camp. Said they're not composed enough with the footy, need to be smarter, slow it down a little bit. Uh, they did expect Wodonga to play like this. He said they did this last time, so they need to lower their eyes, shorter kicks going inside 50, and they want that front half turnover. So uh, plenty of messages from the Pigeons camp. They've only got two, two, one, thirteen, so uh, haven't got this one sewn up by any measure at the moment. Yeah, they're playing really well, Yarra, and I think Wodonga are doing a really good job defensively. They just... As soon as the more entries inside 50 accumulate, it's going to be harder and harder for Wodonga. So they've got to somehow find out to break it down at that half-forward line and get it going forward. Have a bit of a milestone, too, in the umpiring ranks, Chris O. We do. We've got Mark Bywater, the goal umpire. Uh, been around a long time. Game 150. So a great achievement for Mark Bywater. Game 150. Well done to Marky. Fantastic stuff indeed. Saw him during the week doing some of his best work at the Auburn Wodonga Junior Footy League presentation. Second quarter underway for Wang Motor Group here on 3 and A&M Live. Wiley with the first clearance to half forward. Casey overran the football. Swooping on this one was Wilson. Sort of grabbed off it. Koopman went in there. Wilson brought down pretty hard as well. And we've got a stoppage. First inside 50 for the second term for Wang Motor Group. 
Let's hope we can get a few more goals in this second quarter. One to Josh Mathy and two to the Pigeons through Williams and Coburn. We have another stoppage in attack here for Yarrawonga. Claiming first spot on the ladder at the moment and trying to claim the minor premiership and a week off next week and the safest route for them to the grand final. That would mean they would play in a semi-final against either Albury or Wangaratta. That's what they're after. And, of course, the Dogs preparing to tackle the Rovers next week in a do-or-die elimination final. The Rovers started very well as well against the North Albury Hoppers. Led by 26 at quarter time. Gibbons, his kick goal bound out in the full. Not a great effort for Michael Gibbons. His numbers in that first term, please, Dan. Yeah, Gibbons is reasonably quiet that first term. So he had the five disposals. He seemed to be okay, but not impacting the contest as he usually likes to. So he may get going this quarter, Panda. So Ainsworth, good hands, tight in traffic. Here's Mimo over the footy. Ball on centre wing. Wielding a long way from home. Wilson... Forced to kick off a step. Sends a high one to centre wing. Coming hard there. Making a contest was Harding. Jorgensen runs away with it. And he looks up the ground. And all of his forwards have pushed up. No one at home. Mathy has surely given away a free kick. Grabbed Tyson without the football. And he's going to have it at halfback. Chris Mitchell. Boundary side for Waters. Yeah, you just outnumbered. Had to make a contest and did one uh, against a bigger opponent in Tyson. But uh, Tyson's been pretty good, I reckon, in the back half of the Pigeons so far. Two young defenders in key Post for Yarrawonga in Pendergast and Tyson. Stevie J showing great faith in those two young men. Fronfelder with another beautiful kickoff half back to Pendergast on cue. He's got runners beside him. It's Fronfelder. Takes a bounce. Could have taken a second. Decided to go by hand instead. On to Gibbons. Left foot kick had too much on it for Conway. And it's been chopped off here by the Dogs in Mitch Deneen. Dangerous switch of the footy. Looking for Isaac Cassidy. Wasn't a great kick. Out of bounds. And it's going to get tossed back in five metres around from Yarrawonga's goal. We have played almost three minutes of the yeah. Mac. It's time clock, Dan Vaccaro. We have and not a mistake Wodonga can afford to make in that defensive half. They've got to, If they're going to chip it around, they've got to be able to get it out. Six-point lead to the Pigeons and the CMV truck and bus scoreboard. What a fend-off that is from Willie Wheeler. A left foot snap to finish what was a wonderful move. Oh, that's a wonderful finish from Willie Wheeler. That is a steal on goal that a contender. And Chris Mitchell, that's what that superstar can do. Read the ball really well. His balance was uh, impeccable and uh, just snapped beautifully on his left foot. Non-preferred foot. Looked like he had all the time in the world, but that's what these good players do. They make other guys uh, slow down around them, but uh, a beautiful goal there. That's their third for the Pigeons. Yeah, can't afford to give them lottery. Sort of uh, cheapies and stoppages in their forward 50 Wodonga. They had to get that ball out of the defence. And if it means them being patient and starving the scoreboard as altogether, that's what they've got to do. They can't afford to get those token throw-ins and Yarrawonga are too good in that contest. Who's going to win more Morris medal votes, Wilson or Wheeler? Oh, that's a really good question. I think Wilson, but not by a lot. A oh, wonderful mark. That is there from Noah Spatiri, who's ditched the long sleeves. Interesting. Watch this space. Mid-game. Mid-game. <laughs> Wants to get a bit of a tan on those pasty white arms, I think. <laughs> Goes inside forward 50. It was intercepted by Tyson. His kick is going to bring rain. Willie Wheeler. Wonderful extraction of the football. Fires it back to Wiley, who just gets around Wilson. Too that short. kick is definitely not 15 to Wheeler, who puts it on the boot, tumbles it to centre wing. Koopman tried to tap it to his advantage. Greenhill did well. Got to get rid of it quick because Casey has wrapped him up, holding the ball. Free kick to the Pigeons. Yeah, he just uh, had way too much time. I don't know how much talk he was getting either, but uh, he went through them really well, um, did Ollie Greenhill, but uh, just held on to it a little bit too long. So Matt Casey yet to kick a major in that opening term, coming off five last week. Two-goal lead here to Yarrawonga. Early stages of the Wang Motor Group second term. Here's Coburn. Gives it back to Maury. A beautiful left foot kick into attack over the head of Williams, but it doesn't matter. Just floating in and taking a wonderful mark is Urquhart playing forwarder for the Pigeons. Yeah, He's really. One out, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And a really good play there by Yarrawonga. To, their stoppage work was fantastic. And to get it in their forward 50, that's been the difference so far. When Wodonga have gone forward, it's been scrappy and there's no numbers where Yarrawonga are just so precise in their forward entries. And Logan Moore is a beautiful kick. So uh, you'd be happy to get on the end of his kicks. Played every single game like this year, Jordan Urquhart. And that is a wonderful drop punt. Yarrawonga with the last four in this game. The margin's out to three goals. 25 plays seven 
on the CMV Truck and Bus scoreboard, Dan Vaccaro. Yeah, it does, and it's starting to get away from Wodonga. They just can't afford to turn it over in pivotal spots, which is where they're doing, but we will go around the grounds at the moment, and he's weighing Rovers 29 over North Aubrey 9 at the moment. Murderford 15 to Wodonga Raiders 25, and Lavington 13 over Aubrey 24, and it's been a positive start to the quarter for Yarrawonga there. Will Will has had the four disposals already this quarter. Cam Wilson, Gibbons, and Wiley all touching the footy as well. So Mathy with the first for the Dogs inside the first couple of minutes of this game, and Yarrawonga with the last four. The dual stick at half back wants to go out to the far side, like something out there, and it's Bradshaw who marks on centre wing. The Dogs just need to get their hands back on the football here, and have a bit of territory in their forward half. Going inside 50 was Brown. Coming hard there was Spatiri. Not able to mark. Able to do the work at ground level, though. Fires on goal. Spatiri. Is it there? No. I think it's been marked on the goal line. It has by Urquhart. Wonderful work there by the Arawonga defence because that was heading straight through the middle from Spatiri. And Urquhart marked his masters at right half back. Wants to go inboard. Finds Urquhart again. Working hard. So second term. Two goals to Yarrawonga through Wheeler and Urquhart. They lead by three goals as we go boundary side to Chris Mitchell. Boundary throw in. Yeah, Wilson just got a, uh, a very clever hand in there for a boundary throw in. But I guess at what stage do Wodonga say, well, we need to, to score. We're not going to stop... Uh, Yarrawonga scoring, so we probably need to put some scoreboard pressure on because it's not happening at the it's moment. It's probably, yeah, you're absolutely right, Mitch, and it's probably a little bit of a happy medium. They've got to work out how to cor uh, nullify their scoring but also be able to go forward with numbers as well. So it is a really hard one. But Matt Wilson, he's been the one that's been so good for them. He's up to 10 disposals already this game, and he looks to be their most important player so far. Tackle of the year, a Mawson's concrete player yeah, that I that one from Willie Wheeler. Just pickpocketed him. Just <laughs> held on to Josh Mathy with the one left bicep. Wasn't getting out of Willy Wheeler at all and winning a free kick for Yarrawonga. Coburn playing on, firing it inside once again. Conway, here's Kennedy, hand passing it to Fronfeld. Left foot kick on goal. That is a beautiful finish from Bailey. We know he loves a celebration. Pigeons footy at their finest. They've kicked the last five goals and the margin's out to four goals. On the CMV track and bus scoreboard, 31 plays, 7, Chris Mitchell. It's only his 10th goal, I think, for the season, uh, Bailey, but uh, he will like that one. You don't want to give him too much space because uh, he'll just make it, make you pay. But uh, I love the game of Willie Wheeler so far. You called his uh, tackle there. It was brilliant before he pickpocketed um, the Wodonga player there. But uh, it was just fantastic to see. But uh, he's been outstanding, and so has uh, Bailey Fraunfelder. Yeah, Yarrawonga are just starting to untie the Wodonga defence a little bit at the moment. So it's starting to get a little bit concerning. Wodonga need to bite back and, and learn how to attack um, with some with some emotion and, and some talent, I think. Fraunfelder and Maury seem to be putting the dog's defence under pressure. Beautiful left foot kicks, and it'd be worrying for Jordan Taylor, Chris Mitchell. Yeah, well, I mean, how do you stop it too? I mean, you, you want to put pressure on. The well, dog's, dog's pressure's been pretty good. They're just probably not set up right at the moment. Wilson out of the stoppage, sends it forward once again for the Pigeons. Morrison first there for the Dogs. Kicks to half forward, or big contest there. Flying high was Mathy and also Wilson. We've got a stoppage at ground level. Just forward to centre here for the Dogs. A bit of a Broadcast side, on. and Chris O, a bit happening off the ball. Yeah, there is a little bit, but I think the umpire's done the right thing. He's thrown it up and play on. Bradshaw being wrapped up straight away by Wiley, winning a free kick for holding the ball. What a superstar Mark Wiley is, and still going a fair yeah. bit off the ball between Howe and Mathy, Chris O. Mathy's right in it, and Lockie Howe, big <laughs> come and said, no, you're not going to have any of that, so I think it's going to stop now. David and Goliath, that is. Mathy up to Howe's hip. It's in the hands now of Wilson. <laughs> Goes in board looking for Coburn. Takes it at the highest point. Hand passes it on to Ned Pendergast. Ran into a bit of trouble. Coming through here was Beatty. Winging it back for the Dogs. Wilson comes out broadcast side. Half back. It's in the hand of Cade Brown. 31 play 7. CMV truck and bus scoreboard on 3 and on him live. Pigeons lead. Singles to Urquhart. Williams, Wheeler, Fronfelder and Coburn. Here's Masters on centre wing. Oh, beautiful work. And a great smother there from Greenhill. To force a boundary throw in as Masters was kicking. We'll go boundary side to Chris Mitchell for Waters. Yeah, I could nearly uh, throw it in myself, but uh, a great work. How was the candy there? 
from McMaster, from Masters. He's just one of the best in the comp. Obviously, Morris medalist from last year. Yeah, he's a fantastic player, Masters. And I just feel like Wodonga need to have a run with roll with Bailey Fraunfelder. He's their most dangerous player at the moment, that runoff half back. Whether you send a Dan Wartman forward on a defensive roll or Ollie Greenhill back, um, they've, there's something that's got to be done there. So there's a free kick off the ball. Kitching fires an inside forward 50, and I think the mark's <laughs> been taken low down there by... Bailey Griffiths resting forward, Chris Mitchell. He nearly, he was on the ground when he marked it. He slid a long way, expecting it to come a little bit higher and him to get under the ball, but he just plucked it off the surface and uh, the umpires paid it, but uh, dearly needed a goal here for Bailey Griffiths. Played a pretty good game, Bailey Griffiths. I feel like he's nullifying Lockie Howe's influence a little bit. He, we know he's a very good tap ruckman and he's around the ground's been a bit so-and-so this year, but a great mark. He went to ground very early, did Bailey, and it extrapolated the slide. He took it, though, and it's... What a great effort on goal. It's going to fall short, so not troubling the scorers from the big ruckman. Tyler Lovell has it for the Pigeons. So 31 plays, 7 still on the CMV truck and bus second quarter scoreboard. We have played just over 10 minutes on the Macca's time clock. Fothergill marks, wants to play on straight away. Left foot kick was pretty casual, looking for Maury. Ironspawn down there, Harding for the Dogs. His hand pass found Ma. On to Wartman. It was an awkward sort of torpedo <laughs> kick. Worked out all right, though, to Greenhill. And here is Mimo on centre wing. Called to play on straight away. His kick looking for Wilding. And we've got a ball up Dan Vaccaro on I the foot of stat sheet. That's the real thing I want to see more of from Oscar Wilding. That was the first time this game he's been able to get up the ground and influence Lee Masters' effect of marking that ball off across half-back. So Wilding has to work a little bit harder if the half-forwards aren't going to do it themselves. Zach Harding playing a pretty good game in the ruck as well. Mathy hand passes it to Ma. Scrubber of a kick to Beattie. Called to play on. Mimo likes something in the pocket and he finds Jorgensen. His twin. His yeah. twin. Mimo and Jorgensen, they're hard to tell apart sometimes, but he's a pretty safe kick, Chris Mitchell. And that's exactly what they need to do. Lower their eyes, those short 20, 25-metre passes. Uh, Jorgensen, by no mean, is a, a big player, but uh, lower their eyes beautifully, going into 50, had a little bit more time and space. Beatty, great um, mark, and then a quick handball. Uh, that quick ball movement doesn't give him time to set up. Kicked 18 goals, Adam Jorgensen. And he's fired this one across the face, and it's through from minor score. When you get chances inside 50, you've got to take them. And Yarrawonga playing on pretty much straight away. I'm not sure it actually did score, did it, Chris Mitchell? No, I don't think there was okay. a score. Okay, I was riding down a point. They'd be disappointed with their last couple of efforts on goal. Wodonga, 1-1-7, trail the Pigeons, 5-1-31. Uh, Coburn, in fact, it was dropping yep. a pretty easy mark there. And it's a boundary throw in. A blood rule. Uh, Masters, I think, coming off. He copped one a little bit earlier, maybe in the in the nose, but he's just got a bit of claret coming out, so coming he'll be all right. With a bit of claret. But the one thing I've really liked with Dong in these last five minutes is their half forwards are getting to work. Jorgensen and Mimo are starting to do a little bit more. But as I said, I want to see more from Nick Beatty and Wilding, those deep guys, get up forward and nullify the influence of Masters and Fraunfelder if they're running off the half back as well. Three goals in this second term through Wheeler, Urquhart and Fraunfelder. All to the way of the blue and the white. The Pigeons, 13 played. Macca's time clock. Harding applying a good tackle for a big fella. That's what you love to see. Jordan Taylor, the outgoing coach of the Dogs, sitting in front of us about five rows in front of our commentary position. He'd be pretty happy with that. Ball up, 50 out. Dogs goal. How this time. Good tackle from Harding. Wraps him up. Caught holding the ball. Yep. And the young fella... First game of the year, and wins a free kick 50 metres out on a slight angle, Dan Vaccaro. Yeah, fantastic. That's exactly what you want to see from your young boys. I don't know if he's got the distance. I think he'll lower his eyes. So Harding kicks to the top of the goal square, does the safe thing down there, taking a great mark was Pendergast in defence. That was probably too easy there in the end from young Ned. Goes short to Howe, trying to work hard off big Griffiths, big Bailey. Gibbons has it now at half back. Good coverage from Casey Maher on Cam Wilson, who wanted to lead 
Down the wing. It's in the hands of Lovell Chris Mitchell. Boundary side for Waters. Yeah, it's good work by Casey Maher. Uh, Cam Wilson's tried to get away a couple of times and uh, just not letting that easy entry out of defence, yeah. which has happened so far in this game. Yeah, and the one thing that Wodonga are doing really well is they've been able to camp the footy in their area for the first time we've seen today. So if they can keep it in there for another few minutes and be able to probably get a score would be great. You don't want Yarrawonga rebounding here. Look at Gibbons' kick inside to the middle of the ground to Pendergast and it just opened up the whole ground. Look at the numbers flood forward. Fronfelder onto Iron Spawn. Pulls the kick at the last minute and finds Jordan Urquhart 45 mm. metres out on a slight angle. Wonderful movement Chris Mitchell. You called it perfectly and that's one thing uh, that Stevie J highlighted at quarter time was they wanted to switch the ball pretty quickly and not give Wodonga time to flood the back line and that's what they did there. What about that kick from Gibbons to just open up the entire ground and left the dogs defence searching for answers. Urquhart he's already kicked one goal in this quarter. Make it two. A sensational drop punt. Yarrawonga on the charge. They go to 6-1-37. The Dogs 1-1-7 on the CMV Truck and Bus scoreboard. Wonderful finish from Urquhart. It is a wonderful finish. I don't know if I'm being honest if the scoreboard really reflects the way Wodonga have played the last 10 minutes. I think they've been really good. They've been able to cant the ball inside their forward 50, but this is just a sheer example of just how good Yarrawonga are. If, they, if you're going to give them any time through the middle of the ground, they're just going to kill you, and that's exactly what they've done there. And Wodonga, they haven't been bad, but they just haven't been good enough to match up with the best team in the comp. Class there from Michael Gibbons. Going early there in the ruck contest was Harding, and the Pigeons go forward once again, and taking a mark is Casey. And he certainly has the distance from... About 53, 54 metres here, Chris Mitchell. You can see he's going back straight away. Yeah, no no chance of uh, passing that one off. But uh, you've got big Lee Williams waiting in the goal square if it falls a bit short. But uh, he's had a good season, Matt Casey. You back himself from here. 14 goals in the last four weeks. Five goals last week against the Rovers and a lot from outside 50 as well. So he's going to line up here pretty much directly in front. Kick the Pigeons' seventh goal in a row. Keeps it pretty low. Went that extra distance and pulled it for a minor score. So the Pigeons, 6 2 38. The Dogs, 1 1 7. 17 played on the Macca's time clock. That's on the CMV truck and bus. Yeah, uh, yeah. Catch a bit of a break there, Wodonga. They have kicked really well, which has been fortunate for Yarrawonga and unfortunate for Bulldogs. But Bulldogs, I just feel like, have to just have a little bit more patience. If they can get within sort of those four, three goals at half time, the game's not over. And they're playing decent footy. They've just got to learn how to attack a little bit cleaner and more precise. Casey winning it back here at half forward for the Pigeons. Fires it to an open goal square, getting a bad bounce and through for another minor score. Yarrawonga peppering the goals here. 6 3 now, 39. To the Dogs, 1-1-7 on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard. Second term action for Wangaratta Motor Group. Beautiful kick out of defence there from the Dogs, finding Wilson, who's given away a free oh, kick for soft. in the back, Chris Mitchell. Crowd doesn't like it here at the kennel, but no, uh, yeah, a push, I guess, but that's what the umpires say. Koopman with the free kick here at half forward, gets out the back of the contest, and Coburn with his second Mawson's <laughs> concrete mark of the day has plucked it once again out the back. He's nearly one of the smallest players on the field, but he's playing really tall today. He's been fantastic above his head, and uh, you back him from here, probably 10, 15 metres out from a, uh, you know, a tight angle. That one there hurts the Wodonga Bulldogs if they kick this panda. Bit of a soft free kick, but it was there, and they've gone forward, and they won't make a mistake here, Yarra. 15 metres out. Slightish angle from Coburn. Makes no mistake. That's his second goal. The Pigeons have kicked their seventh 7-2-44, the Dogs 1-1-7 one, one, on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard. A beautiful kick, Chris Mitchell, from yeah. Braden Coburn. And it was a perfect spot for a left footer, wasn't it? Just opened the, the angle up beautifully for Coburn, who's got two for the game. But they're able to absorb the pressure really well, Wodonga, and limit Yarrawonga's scoring in the first quarter. But they haven't been able to do that in the second term, even though they've dominated large, large periods of the quarter. Yeah, really disappointing for Wodonga. They've been good and brave, but just nowhere near good enough for Yarrawonga Panda. Not at all. So a 38-point margin here, and the Pigeons are going forward once again. Kennedy over the football. And we're going to have a stoppage here. 60 out from the Pigeons' goal. So 45 plays seven. We'll go around the grounds with Dan Vaccaro soon for 40 winks. Myrtle for taking on the Raiders. Lavington up against Aubrey. And the Rovers at home to North Aubrey. Here's Urquhart with two goals already. 
Dropping the ball there was the uh, was Masters and well done young Riley Gill. Winning a free kick here for the Dogs. 65 out from home. Fires it in once again and Maury dropped what he should have marked but I reckon he was pretty stiff not to get a free kick. Mayfi quick snap on goal and it's through for a minor score. I think it might have been touched off the boot anyway. 1-2-8 the Dogs. The Pigeons 7 3 45 on the CMV truck and bus. 20 minutes played. Macca's time clock. Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Just need to lock it in, but I think the difference has been Yarrawonga's kicking by foot. You know, you get the yep. likes of Fraunfelder, uh, Wiley. Um, Wheel has been outstanding. Uh, that, that ball movement through the middle of the ground has been able to yep. um, cut up Wodonga's defence, and that's how they've scored their goals. You couldn't be any more correct, Mitchie, and I think it's really just been a sheer fact of talent that's been uh, it's been really good for Yarrawonga and Wodonga, they've got most systems right this game, but they're just nowhere near as talented as Yarra, and Yarra have put that to the sword. But we will go around the grounds quickly while we are on centre wing. So Wang Rovers, 47 to North Aubrey's 10. Murderford Saints, 29 to Wodonga Raiders, 25. So a good game on our hands there, Panda. And Lavington, 21 to Aubrey, 32, who are staying with him. Wartman fired his hand pass to Jorgensen. Bit of a look-away handball to Bradshaw, and the Dogs have the overlap there. Mathy going in hard. He's done a 360. More he had him. Fires it back to Matt Wilson. Keeps this one low inside 50. Beautiful pick up there by the big fella Harding who ran into a willy wheel of wall. Not getting past Willy. And a stoppage. Inside forward 50. Here for the dogs. The thing that makes Yarrawonga so dominant as well is their star midfielders get down and do the dirty work as well. They're tackling and their pressure and their one percent. Yep. You don't see stars of the competition do it like Yarrawonga's midfield. It was Miles Jewell, in fact, there earlier for the Dogs. Lockie Howe winning a free kick in defence for Yarrawonga. He's just starting to get on top too, Lockie Howe, I feel, in the last 15 or so minutes on top of Bailey Griffiths as well. They've kicked the last seven goals, have the Pigeons. Have the footy here on the far wing. Wheeler, look at that for a hand pass on to Coburn. Fires it inside 50 again. Morrison up against Williams. Getting a little bit frustrated, big Leroy. He's, little... doing, he's doing a really good job, Charlie Morrison, on Lee Williams. And there's no doubt they're getting a little bit of help from Deneen, another, another backman that are dropping in that hole. But, yeah, he's, he's a top quality fullback, uh, Charlie Morrison. Gee, he's got a few goals to kick, uh, Panda, if he's going to get he the does. 13, like you said. He does. He's got 12 to go, <laughs> 11 to tie it. So a boundary throw at inside 50 for the Pigeons. He's letting me down, Leroy. We wanted a nice, I guess, exciting Doug Strang race. Might not be that in the end unless something remarkable happens in the second half. <laughs> Maybe he needs to speak to the Yak and Danda runners-up in the uh, under-19s for the leading goal kicking in Dan Vaccaro here in this commentary box. Spiteri on hands and knees. Beautiful hand pass from Brown. No looker on to Mathy. And here they are, the dogs. Inside 50. Wilding outnumbered once again. Lovell finds Urquhart at half back. Goes in board to Wilson. So Yarrawonga under pressure one second. Releasing it the next. Wilson kicks to half forward. Casey with two to beat. Stuck the one mid up. Did really well. Tried to push off Cassidy. And he's been pinged for a throw. Well done by young Isaac Cassidy. Wins a free kick at half back. Boundary side, Chris Mitchell for Waters. Yeah, now they're fighting hard, Wodonga. They just need a little bit more up forward. You just couldn't uh, hope for a better player than Tommy oh! Johnson. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Oh, right. What a effort that was from Masters flying high. The Pigeons rebound. He wasn't able to mark it. Coburn inside 50. Williams dropping an easy mark. What he should have taken. Spateri under a lot of pressure. Fothergill stings him holding the ball. And he wins the free here, 55 out from the Pigeons. Too far out for Nick to score. So getting a little bit of advice there. The umpires doing a ripping job, I think, today, actually. So Fothergill, he's definitely too far out here. Lots of numbers getting back to the goal square. 45 plays, eight. Beautiful chip kick over the top, finding Wilson. A beautiful kick there from Fothergill. He had everyone fooled, Chris Mitchell. He did. He just uh, weighted it beautifully. He said, Cam, there's a little bit of a pocket there. You're going to run into it and you're going to mark it uh, nearly directly in front. Uh, but he's going to pass it too. He is. He tried to go into the guy who gave it to him in Fothergill. And Ma came across and fisted it away. And the Pigeons may have blown it here. Wilson's exiting kick was smothered by Williams, was able to fend off. They try and chain it out of defence. There's a free kick here. 
It's going the way of the Dogs. Back inside defensive 50. It's going to go the way of Matt Wilson. 45 plays, 8. It's a 37-point margin on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard as we tick up towards halftime here at the John Flower Oval. It is, and that's the siren there. Matt Wilson, two boys. 19 disposals that half. He's just been in really good form. He needs a few other boys to jump on that bandwagon with him. Half time, as we just heard there from the siren, from the John Flower Oval. It's a half owned by Yarrawonga. 45 plays, eight. We'll be back after this with our halftime show for 40 winks on 3 and E's r &M Live, where you won't miss a thing. Be clear. Thanks, Campbell. Good stuff, guys. I think we're going along okay. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a crumbed barramundi fillet served with chips and dill hollandaise from just $22. Come and be part of it. Union Bar at the SSNA. Pain or injury can stop you from living life to the fullest. Aubrey Wodonga Private Hospital specialises in advanced orthopaedic services and offers a full range of care from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation. Get back to the life you love with our support. Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where students come first. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. GoTafe is hiring and we want you on our team. Flexibility, professional development, generous remuneration and a staff wellbeing program are just a few of the great benefits we offer. If you have a passion for your skill or qualification and you're looking for real work-life balance, then GoTafe is the place for you. GoTafe is leading. Inspiring. With hands on. Flexible. Fabulous. We have dozens of trainer positions and corporate roles open right now. Get in touch today. AY, we're your home of live sport. Every weekend, we bring you the best live broadcasts of the Ovens and Murray football and netball. 
Listen this weekend on your radio or the 2AY app. Against the Arawonga Pigeons last for round before the finals. Check out the social Pigeons dining. leading the way, 45 to 8. Daniel Vaccaro, 37 point lead, and it could be more. Yeah, it definitely could be. I, I think, weirdly enough, I think Wodonga are playing okay at the moment. I feel like they're probably treading water a little bit. They almost don't want to go forward because the rebound off Yarrawonga is just scary with Lee Masters and, and Bailey Fraunfelder and co off the half back there. So Yarrawonga are literally just winning on pure talent at the moment. I think their Wodonga system is good enough. I think they're probably lacking that half forward link up with their full forwards. I don't know if their full forwards are working hard enough. I, I, I want to single sort of out Nick Beatty and Oscar Wilding, who are great when the ball is forward, but when the ball is around that 50 or 60 metres, they've really got to get there and make a contest. Even if you are even if you've got no players in that 50, you've got to win the ball at that half forward first because, for one, it doesn't allow them to rebound as hard um, and you've just got to find a way to score. So that's something that they've really got to improve this next half. Urquhart's got a couple. Coburn's got a couple. But Willie Wheeler, uh, Fraunfelder have been outstanding in the midfield and driving the pigeons forward. And we highlighted their uh, kicking accuracy by foot. It's really tearing Wodonga apart at the moment. It is. Their, their kicking is just top-notch. It's the best in the league. Um, the one thing I love about... Uh, Yarra, and I think I said it during that quarter, is their superstar midfielders work so hard um, when they don't have the footy in hand as well, like Willie Wheeler, Cam Wilson, Gibbons. They're not one-way runners at all. They're two-way runners. They're, they're fantastic. Um, they don't need to necessarily have 30 disposals in a game. They only need 20. Like Gibbons, uh, Willie Wheeler's only had nine disposals. He's been amazing because his, his work and his kicking when he has got the ball has just been perfect. Um, so Yarra Wonga are just a... a Really, really good side, and they're just better than Wodonga, and that's exactly how it's unfolding at the moment. Class above at the moment, it is Yarrawonga leading Wodonga 45-8 to eight at halftime here at the John Flower Oval. Uh, what is happening in the other games, Daniel? Last round before finals next weekend. Absolutely, yes, we will go around the ground. So at WJ Finlay Oval, it is Wangaratta Rovers 7-5-47 to North Aubrey's 1-8-14. So a good old lesson there. Rovers are giving North Albury. Uh, at McNamara Reserve, it is Murderford 5 6 to Raiders 4 one Murderford were up by about four goals at one point. So Murderford have come back. And at Lavington Sports Ground, it is Lavington 3 3 to Aubrey's 5 5 So hanging in there, Lavington as well. So that's usually a pretty good game no matter where um, both sides sit on the ladder. But, yeah, an interesting last round of footy going into finals, Chris O. I think the important thing for Wodonga here is, as funny as it sounds, you want to win every single game you play, but I think the most important thing is to get no more injuries going into a guaranteed final. Their spot can't change. Their opponent can't change at all. So uh, Wodonga, uh, uh, in a way, I think, are playing for next week. You're obviously going to hear JT talk about they want to win every game and they want to win this game and that sort of stuff, but the priority for them is to not get any more injuries going into a big game. So I think next half they've just got to take the game on and see what they can get out of it and maybe put a few systems in place that may work next week against Rovers even. It's a really hard uh, question, isn't it? How hard do Wodonga want to go to this one? Is it already done and dusted 45 to 8 at the moment? But uh, they ne really need to have one eye on next week and not get any more injuries. It's their first time in the finals since 2009. So it's been a long drought here at the John Flower Oval. They'll be pretty keen for September action. Who's playing well so far for the Doggies? Matty Wilson looks like he's setting the world on fire in the stats. Yeah, I think Matty Wilson's just been unbelievable. He's been probably one of the best players on the ground, let alone for Wodonga, and Wodonga have struggled to score. So he's had 19 disposals. He seems to be sort of everywhere, predominantly off half-back, but even he's going into the middle for pitch hitting. He's really, um, he's really excelling with that big out by Angus Baker. So um, he's just been fantastic. I think Josh... Been in those positions for Wodonga today, that'll just make him a complete midfielder. Noah Bradshaw, he's had eight disposals. I think he's been really handy. I think Jorgensen at that end of that second quarter came really good. He, they, I feel like they probably don't need to play him in the midfield. I think if they if floats around that half forward, he can help link up those full forwards as well. And Noah Spateri had seven disposals in the first quarter. He's a little bit quiet that quarter, but he's been really good as well. So I don't think Wodonga are playing too bad at all. I think they're playing actually quite decent, but I just think Yarra Wonga are just so good. And I, I think the hard thing for Wodonga is they don't want to go forward because the rebound is so dangerous for Yarra Wonga. So they've <laughs> got to find a way to get it in deeper parts of their 50 and then stop that uh, rebound from Fraunfelder and Masters. They don't want to turn it over in crucial spots where Yarra Wonga's going to kick a couple of uh, uh, passes into the 50. But uh, how do you see the matchup between Charlie Morrison and Big Lee Williams? We spoke a little bit pre-game about 
Williams' chance for the Doug Strang. I think he needed 13. <laughs> He's <laughs> not getting probably that. probably not going to happen, I don't think but Charlie how are you seeing that, that matchup Well, so I don't far? think Charlie Morrison's had 13 kicked on him since uh, <laughs> since he's been at the club. He's a fantastic fullback. I think he's probably in that top three or four best yeah. fullbacks in the competition. Oh, I think he's got the better of Masters, uh, as Williams, I should say, so far. I think he's doing a really good job. He's definitely getting help. Um, I think Mitch Deneen, he's never a big accumulator of the football, but I think he's been getting in that position. Holes, he's he? getting in those mm-hmm. holes. Um, as is even Matt Wilson, which is astonishing yeah. considering he's had 19 disposals, but he's getting back and doing the hard work. So it just shows what it takes to stop a player like Lee Williams. But Charlie Morrison, uh, one-on-one, he's doing a fantastic job on him for sure. If we have a look at your stats, uh, what's standing out so far? Well, the standout thing for me so far is the fact that no Yarra Wonga players really stood out. Um, I think Nick Fothergill was good that half, but uh, that first quarter he had eight disposals. He only had two that quarter. So quiet. Mark Wiley's only had sort of the eight disposals. Gibbons the same as well. He's probably been their best. He had five disposals in the first quarter, and he had six that quarter as well. Cam Wilson had eight that quarter, so he's probably been their best around the footy. Um, Willie Wheeler, we mentioned, who's been fantastic. He's had nine disposals, but he's just been so good with the ball in hand. And Lee Masters has had 13, so he's been probably their most dangerous player, along with Bailey Fraunfelder off the halfback, Mitchie. And if we turn our attention to next week, Daniel, it's going to be uh, all the show on the road at Wangaratta. So uh, the elimination final and the qualifying final down in Wangaratta. It'll be Wodonga and the Rovers on Sunday at uh, the Normans Oval, the showgrounds in Wangaratta. How do you see that one shaping up? I can't wait for that matchup. I reckon that's just going to be amazing. I think they're both really evenly poised teams. Um, I think uh, Wangaratta Rovers definitely have more talent on their, on their, on their side, but we've seen from past years that they're so inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get for them. I think Wodonga, if they have a full team in, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a good defensive team that can go forward and score goals if the other team allows you to. So I think that's going to be a really, really mouth-watering matchup for mine. I think it's a flip of the coin, Rovers and Wodonga, to be honest, um, just for the sheer lack of consistency from Rovers and I think a decent system that Wodonga have um, at the moment. So if they get a couple of boys back, Angus Baker, the pivotal one, but Tom, Tom Johnson, Johnson as well, he's two that... They're, they're two. really missing him today, both lo- those both of those players, but they've got it up there. They just haven't had that target, have they? Yeah, correct. And that's their two most important players out. So you'd think they'd almost be a different side with them back in against Rovers. And the other matchup too, you've got... Well, if we, if results go to plan today, Yarra Wonga's got one foot on the minor premiership at the moment. Yep. And they'll have the week off and it'll be Aubrey and Wangaratta at the WJ Finlay on Saturday. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a great contest as well. Wangaratta are obviously shot down with injury. However, you just don't know what you're going to get and they're still a great side. So if they can, um, if, if they go up against Aubrey, they're really going to fancy themselves to uh, to back in. I'll tell you one thing, I don't want to be a team playing Wangaratta come finals, that's for sure. No, you certainly wouldn't, even with their injuries. Ben Reid out for the season. Is there too much pressure on Cal Moore, do you think, to, to lead the Maggies uh, to the Premiership? You, they'd really love um, love one this season, considering what happened last year. Yeah, for sure. They'll be pr- they'll be hungry to get it. They're not going to go down without a fight, for sure, Wangaratta. Uh, is there too much pressure? I don't know. There's, there's a lot of pressure, but I think he's probably the best player in the league. So um, if you're going to put pressure on someone, it's going to be him. And if, if he can do it, he's just a fantastic footballer. Um, I think they want Newton back, even if he comes back and he's not fully fit and he can just be that second target, um, take some sort of pressure off um, Cal Moore. That could possibly go a very long way to contending for the flag for sure. All right, before we have a quick break, uh, what's your tip? How's Wodonga going to get back into this one? Do they need to throw the kitchen sink at trying to score? Because they've been trying to stop Yarra Wonga from scoring. It hasn't worked so far. Yeah, they have. I think the one thing that they've got to do is they've, for one, as I mentioned before, their deep forwards need to get up the ground and, and impact the contest around that half that half forward line because that's just not what they haven't done. They can't allow Yarrawonga just to break free in the midfield. I know that their kicks are going to get them out of trouble more often than not Yarrawonga, but you can't give them an out. You can't let that that centre of the ground just go and be free, otherwise they're just going to cut you up. I think Wodonga's defensive system has been really good. I think that stays the same. They... they Barring a couple of mistakes, they've been able to come out of it reasonably well, but it breaks down at that wing to half forward. So their deeper forwards have got to get up and help, but again, their half forwards got to get to work, and they've got to work harder. And he saw that at the end of that quarter with Jorgensen and Mimo and those guys, but they've got to get another couple of boys to really help out around that contest and stop the corridor run from Yarra. Well, that's Daniel Vaccaro's special comments. This is the Halftime Show brought to you by 40 Winks. We'll have all the second half action. Don't you go away. On o Live, you won't miss a thing. You clear. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a crumbed barramundi fillet served with chips and dill hollandaise from just $22. 
Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Pain or injury can stop you from living life to the fullest. Aubrey Wodonga Private Hospital specialises in advanced orthopaedic services and offers a full range of care from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation. Get back to the life you love with our support. Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where students come first. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. GoTave is hiring and we want you on our team. Flexibility, professional development, generous remuneration and a staff wellbeing program are just a few of the great benefits we offer. If you have a passion for your skill or qualification and you're looking for real work-life balance, then GoTafe is the place for you. GoTafe is leading. Inspiring. Hands-on. Flexible. Fabulous. We have dozens of trainer positions and corporate roles open right now. Get in touch today. Why we're your home of live sport. Every weekend we bring you the best live broadcasts of the Ovens and Murray football and netball. Listen this weekend on your radio or the 2AY app. Timing, that's what you call from Chris Mitchell and Dan Vaccaro on our 40 weeks halftime show. Three quarter time, sorry, half time done and dusted. The third quarter about to start. I should say here on 3 and on m Live. The Dogs with it all to do up against the Pigeons who lead by 37 points. Pardon me, Blake Pandoresco with you, Dan Vaccaro, Chris Mitchell. That's what you do when you scoff down a chicken schnitzel gravy coleslaw roll. And I'll tell you what, Dan, you'd be happy Good. with this. That's one of the best chicken schnitzel rolls oh. I've had in Huge. the ovens of Murray this year. Huge call. That's great. They always do a good job down there. And great to see big Tommy Johnson's just in the canteen serving everyone as well, which is great. Absolutely. Having to turn myself off. Just because it was such a wonderful roll, Dan. Yeah, and the potato cakes and dim seams I might add have just been superb as well. So great work with Donga Canteen. 
Here we go, third quarter underway. We're doing it for STY Metals here on RM Live and Mathy extracting it. Hand passing it on to Jorgensen, going back inside forward 50. Wilding caught one there from Pendergast. Wilson swooping on it, snapping open goal square. Just didn't have enough on it. Snapping there and Spateri. Noah Spateri in the end with a steel line goal today. A goal inside 20 seconds just to start the Dogs want Chris Mitchell. Our man Spateri, the Johnny on the man, Johnny on the spot, whatever you want to call it. But uh, right in the goal square, they needed that one. Great start for Wodonga in this third quarter. But uh, great clearance out of the middle. Uh, I think Jorgensen... Uh, got that one, but uh, beautiful start here by Wodonga. Wodonga, just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, absolutely. What a positive start for Wodonga, and what a great finish by Noah. He doesn't miss those opportunities, those half opportunities he's great at, and he seems to probably start a little bit deeper is it around that half forward line to help out those guys, Jorgensen and, and Harry Kitching as well, but Great extract from Josh Mathy out of the middle and, and Matt Wilson again, the man who I think is probably almost pissed on ground, um, had another hand in that goal as well. So what a start that is from the Wodonga Bulldogs. Right place, right time for Noah Spateri. Loves Ange Postacoglu and the Tottenham Hotspurs. We've got another ball up in the middle of the ground here. So Yarrawonga leads. In the fifth minute mark of the first quarter, Wartman just dropped what he should have marked at half back. Morrison went to ground and at slipped. awkward time slipped and Wilson got him high. <laughs> so it was lucky Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Sorry, Panda, yeah, very lucky. Slipped at the wrong time, but then at uh, the Arrowwonga Pigeon, I think it was Wilson got him a little bit high. So they just need to relieve a little bit of pressure here. Need to kick their way out of it uh, with some cheap little kicks, I reckon, some chip kicks, but this one's going to go longer from Wartman. Finds Mathy in the middle of the ground. His number's Dan. Josh Mathy has had 14 disposals so far. He's been really good for Wodonga. Kicks to half forward. Stretching there was Mimo. Firing it off here to Beatty. Setting five from around 45 metres. Not registering a score. In fact, it did just sneak in for a minor score in the end. So Wodonga with a point. 2-2-15. Two, two, sorry, 2-3-15. The Pigeons 7-3-45 on our... Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. Third quarter action. We're doing it for STY medals here on 3 and a and m Live. Maury going in there, firing it off here to Masters. He kicks down the line. It's been marked here by Matt Casey. Long way from home. His kick to half forward was looking for Gibbons. Wasn't on the same wavelength, though. He had his back to the play and Wartman floated in. Took a mark at half back for the Dogs. Broadcast side. Still a beautiful day here in Wodonga. Wartman's kick, though. Intercepted by Ryan Bruce, one of the best wingers in the competition. Goes short to Masters. We've got the out number here in the switch on the far side. Pendergast marked. Hand passes it to Fronfelder. Over the top looping hand pass here to Gibbons. Firing into the pocket. And marking there on the outstretch was Koopman. Slight angle. He should go back and nail this one. Chris Mitchell, great ball movement again by the Pigeons. Yeah, it was. We haven't uh, sighted him too much, Koopman, but uh, doesn't need too much space there to, to work his magic in the forward 50. Mark the ball at its highest point and uh, going to go back for a shot for uh, the Pigeons. Eight. Right in front of the scoreboard. Here at the John Flower Oval. For the first goal of... Yarrawonga's third term. He likes it off the boot. It's snuck in. A steel line goal that a contender. There from Jess Koopman. The Pigeons got eight. Eight, three, 51 to the Dogs. Two, two, 14 on our Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you know what the story is of today is the fact that Wartman had that opportunity to go in the midfield. He turned it over. The foot skills weren't there. And then Yarrawonga with their foot skills were able to cut Wodonga up so quickly. Um, and a disappointing goal there to concede for Wodonga. And it looks sort of a little bit out of their reach at the moment as we go into the start of the third quarter. Two inside 50s each for both teams, but just the clarity and the precision Yarrawonga go at is amazing. So 51 plays 15, I should say, on our Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. The margin sits at 36. Williams off hands, back down to Koopman again. Left foot snap, goalward, it's open. Goal square, and it's through for a minor score. So Jesse Koopman just finding a little bit of form and footy here in this STY medals third quarter on 3 and A's r &M Live. Chris Mitchell, Blake Pander, Escott, and Dan Vaccaro with you for the Old Town and Country Tavern. The Pigeons 
trying to claim the minor premiership in season 2023. Maury giving away a free kick for a high on young Ainsworth at half back for the Dogs. Shown a fair bit, young Cohen Ainsworth, since he's worked his way into the side, into the last side. Dan Vicaro. Oh, he's going to be a fantastic player. It runs in his family with his with his father, Keithy Ainsworth, who was a fantastic football and premiership player for Wodonga. He's been a little bit quiet today, Cohen Ainsworth, but not his fault at all. He's going to be a fantastic footballer for this football club. So Ryan Bruce wins it back for the Dogs. Kicks in the direction there of Williams, who went to ground. Quick snap to the goal square for the Pigeons. Casey Ma back. In defence for the Dogs, Mathy's kick asked a big question of young Ainsworth, who was up to the task, a beautiful mark. It wasn't a great kick from Mathy, but Ainsworth, tough. Firing it back to Mathy, on to Bradshaw, bouncing the ball down the Martin Park wing. Broadcast side, no one home. Mimo's the only target there at half forward. Pendergast took an intercept mark, kicks it aggressively into the middle of the ground. Looking for Wilson, Wiley was brought to ground. The Dogs win it back here, Tyson... Has wrapped up Matty Wilson and Cole Tyson will win a free kick for holding the ball. At half back, 52 plays 15 on the Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Yeah, Tyson's been fantastic uh, in the back half and, and so has uh, Wilson to be fair as well. Uh, played a lone hand for Wodonga but uh, yeah, just struggling a little bit to get any possession uh, going and the Pigeons have got the upper hand. Good chase there from Brown on Fronfelder who was storming down the far side. He had to get back on his left foot. And he found Urquhart in the end. Urquhart's been really dangerous for Yarrawonga going forward. He's a he's another sort of fourth um, sort of fiddle to the, the big three, as, as Gus called it in the scorecard. But he's playing a fantastic role at the moment, Urquhart. He's kicked two goals. An unlikely goal kicker, Jordan Urquhart. He's marked this one in his chest, probably 45 out, slight angle. Kicking to the hospital end here of Martin Park. For goal number three, Jordan Urquhart has missed. That's through for a minor score. 8-5, the Pigeons. The Dogs, 2-3. That's on the Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. We played seven minutes. Macca's time clock. Not a great kick out of defence from the dual stick. Lovell was able to win it back for the Pigeons. Wiley's hand pass was to no one. Put Wheeler under the pump. Lots of players around this football and a ball up. Pretty much right in front of Chris Mitchell down on the boundary. For what is you in that sun still, Chris O? I'm in the shade, but the sun is beautiful. And I've got the jacket off, Panda. Not quite gone the shorts that you called for earlier, but it is a beautiful day. Not a bad crowd here either at the John Flower. I reckon it'll be shorts at Sandy Creek tomorrow indeed. Irvine's jumped over this football. Two dogs have dived on him. They want holding the ball. Umpire says no. It's jammed in between centre wing and half forward here for the dogs. Only keep the two goals in this game so far. Wiley extracts it, getting busy in this third quarter. On to Wilson, takes a bounce, kicks to the far side. Coburn up against Ma, hand passes it here to a attacker going forward. That was Urquhart, beautiful delivery inside forward 50. Finding Koopman, who's actually caught one around the chops there, I reckon, from Charlie Morrison. He's going to line up 45 <laughs> out slight angle. Charlie Morrison, I think, just made sure he... Uh had to mark it and gave him an ear massage with the foot, I reckon, a little bit panda. So that was an interesting one there by old Charlie. Lucky not to give away 50. He was lucky. indeed. That was bizarre. He pulls the kick at the last minute, Koopman. Williams, yep, he's going to oh, win a free yeah. kick, Leroy. He's, he's been looking for it all day, hasn't he? He hasn't got one yet, but he's got one directly in front nearly. And, uh, yeah, Big Lee hasn't kicked one yet. Tell us why that was a free kick, Chris. Well, a little bit of holding, uh, but he certainly made the umpire aware of it, didn't he, Panda? He did indeed. Only kicked the one goal so far. One. Lee Williams, 13, sorry, 12 behind. Cal Moore coming into round 18. Wangaratta have the bye in the Doug String medal leading goal kicker race. And his effort here is oh. through for a minor score. Still with the one goal. Tough day at the office for Lee Williams. The for man Lee that was going to kick 13 and chase down Have Cal you picked Moore. your beer yet, Daniel? What sort of beer are you going to get? Oh, who knows what Panda's going to get me. He's probably going to get me <laughs> hammer and tongs. $8 a six-pack. It'll be James Squire, 50 lashes or something like that. Not a great effort from the Dogs. Ryan Bruce wins it back, kicks it to half forward. Fothergill allowed it to bounce. Wilson was set upon straight away by Mimo. They're like two little chihuahuas on ground level. They're fighting for that football. The Dogs win it back. Kick to the broadcast wing. Here's Spateri up against Fronfelder. I like this 1v1 and Spateri wins out. Two loose customers, those two. 
Two interesting <laughs> tattoos as well. Getting them in a function together. That'd be very good. Spatiri on centre wing. Fires it to Mimo. 54 plays 15. Pigeons well in control in this third quarter. Mimo oh, under pressure. It wasn't a great good. hand pass from the dual stick. And here come the Pigeons. Spatiri goes back in and wins it. He has to hand pass it straight away. Koopman was mowing him down. Good pressure from Fothergill on Isaac Cassidy. Boundary throw in. Just four to centre here for Wodonga. 54 plays 14. Dan Vaccaro, 40 winks. Yeah, it's been a it's been a reasonably positive start for Wodonga. Again, they just can't cut them up with their foot skills at the moment. Spatiri has been good. Three disposals so far. Noah Bradshaw and Josh Mathie has been probably Wodonga's best this quarter. He's up to five disposals already in the opening 10 minutes. So Bradshaw met hard by Logan Morey. In the end, Bradshaw able to hand pass his way out of it. Ironspawn almost got Mimo in the back. How over this football, but a scrappy play on centre wing. We'll have another stoppage right in front of Chris Mitchell down on our boundary for Waters. Yeah, well, it's a pretty hot footy at the moment, and that's exactly what both of these sides are going to get next week if they're playing. Obviously, with Dongara, Yarrawonga, box seat for the minor premiership in the week off, but it's a pretty hot pill. Good pressure, good uh, prelude to finals. Yeah, absolutely, and you just... You see Wodonga trying really hard at the moment, which is great to see considering they've got a final replay next week. So it's the exact positivity you want to try and get back in this game and take something out of it. But just get the feeling they're going to try a few things and probably keep a few boys on ice coming to that last quarter. So Jorgensen's kick to Bradshaw was called to play on, not 15. Lee Weems' kick wasn't great and Angsworth won it back for the Dogs. Floats it up to half forward. Gill just must have lost the ball in the sun because he chose not to mark it. And it hit the ground. <laughs> very, very odd I think situation. That's exactly what yeah. happened. That's yeah. exactly what happened. He was looking fair and square right in the sun, young Riley Gill. Awful situation to be in here. Free kick at the Wodonga. John Flower. Yeah, free kick here to Wodonga. It's going to go the way of Zach Harding. 60 from home. Have you liked Big Zach's game today, Dan? I think he's been okay. I think he's given um, Bailey Griffiths a chop out. And I think together they've both nullified uh, Lockie Howe's influence. So that's a main thing for them. Kicks to the goal square. And I think Spiteri's trying to claim a mark there, is he? <laughs> He'll he claim is. anything, Spitzy. Come on. <laughs> he's trying to claim that. It was in a pack of players. He's got to put those long sleeves back on because those arms, yep. they are worse than yours. <laughs> they are now. worse than mine. We asked that question in pregame. Who's got bigger biceps? Both very average. Through for a minor score in the end. The Dogs, they got a 2-4-16. And the Pigeons, 8-6-54. We've played 12 minutes. Macca's time clock. That's on the Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. The Dogs win it back. And it's now in the arms of Matt Wilson. And he is one man who can kick a beautiful drop punt straight through the middle. He'll line up 40 out directly in front. He has been fantastic all day, Matt Wilson. He's up to 22 disposals, and he's about to have a shoot on goal. He has just been really, really good. He's really filled that void that Angus Baker has left in the last couple of weeks. A what on goal, Dan? That's what, I, that's what I was thinking. Shot, shot on goal. <laughs> Matt Wilson with a shot on goal. Good shot. It's through for a steal on goal that they contender. The Dogs get their third. He's a star, young Matty Wilson. They go to 3-3. Three, three. The Pigeons 8-6 on our Harvey Norman betting scoreboard as we tick up towards the 13th minute mark of the Macca's time clock. I think Wodonga have been okay, Pandora. I've said it all game. The scoreboard, I don't know if it reflects it. I think their system's right. They're just falling down in the foot skills like Yarrawonga do, but I think they're going along okay. Four inside 50s this quarter for three marks, so they're being more effective going forward. I think their half forwards are getting to work a little bit more. Um, I'd still like to see those deep fellas get up the ground and impact contest around that back sort of half 50. So back in the middle of the ground here in a whistle Center off the ball. Is it or? You don't see too many sure of those at all these days. No one knows. So it looks like it's, well, he's pointing the wrong way than the umpire, as so in the, it should be Wodonga's free kick. So Chris, so just explain what's happening here. <laughs> the umpires <laughs> have played, the umpire, there's been a whistle from the yep. centre bounce. And the other umpire's coming in for a bit of a chat I with think, the central umpire. I think from what I up. saw is there was an infringement, and I think Broughton pointed to Yarra, but the, go the other umpire on the edge of the square pointed in the way of Wodonga. So Broughton and now it's going, going to, to now it's going to Yarrawonga. Yarrawonga. Lots of confusion. Go. We're all confused in the end. Matt Casey wins it for the Pigeons. Goes inside 50 with a deep entry. Here's Fothergill picking it up. Right place, right oh. time. Goal from Nick Fothergill. He is a genuine superstar. That is goal number 38 for season 2023. And Yarrawonga extend their lead, Chris Mitchell. That really hurts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He's beautiful at the fall of the ball, but uh, when things are going against you, they go against you even further. And, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a nail in the coffin for Wodonga, who have been outstanding and probably had the better of uh, 
um, Yarra Wonga in this third term, yep. but uh, that one really kills and it's uh, yeah, going to be hard to come back from this. That one there really yeah, was super deflating for Wodonga. They had a really good period this Pretty much from the start of the third quarter, but disappointing that they were able to put the nail in the coffin. But Folly Gill's been great. 12 disposals and he's kicked a goal as well. Mark Wiley just working his way back into the contest here. Into some form. Missed last week with Saunas against the Rovers. Start of the season on fire did Mark Wiley. Look at him go to work here. Found a hand pass in the end. It was intercepted by Jewell. Wilson with another 40 winks disposal. Just pulled his kick at the last minute. And Masters... Got Kitching too high. Mathy took the advantage, kicked it in the direction there of Gill. Not able to mark. Wilson just running backwards in defence for Yarrawonga. Pendergast went to ground. Bruce did well in the end. His hand pass was over the boundary line, and it will be tossed back in 40 around from Yarrawonga's goal. It's a yeah, really good contest. You just saw Oscar Wielding just bowl over one of the Yarrawonga boys as well. So he's trying to influence the game any way he can. He has had a quiet game so far. So only gone one game without a goal this year has Oscar Wilding. That was a good chase down effort there from, I think that was Kitching on Gibbons. The Dogs win it back. High one to half forward. Good contest between Bruce and the dual stick. Here's Matt Casey. Long way to bend down for a big fella. His hand pass found Williams. Wilson just got Greenhill high there. Can't believe that wasn't paid. A high free kick. The Wodonga bench certainly wanted a high one there. It's a ball up right on centre wing, right in front of Chris Mitchell. Boundary side for Waters. Yeah, I reckon it was there too, but the umpire's just thrown it up again. Jewel stick with the tap down to Casey Ma. His kick was partially smothered. Casey picks it up for the Pigeons. Off a step, floats it to half forward. Howe resting forward. He's been wrapped up by about three dogs. We'll have a ball up 55 around from the Pigeons goal. Yep. Uh, really good to get it forward and that big kick from Casey. But Wodonga holding up again in the defence. Let's see if they can continue it on here. 17 played. Macca's time clock. Gibbons going inside 50 on his left foot. And it's punched over the boundary line and it'll get tossed back in. Been good today, Gibbons, without being outstanding, Panda. He's up to the 13 touches. I think he's been good in areas. But I think Wodonga have nullified. He's influenced a reasonable amount as well. The more games and minutes that he plays, yep, that's right. yep. it's super important for Yarrawonga. Confidence in his body. 60 plays, 21. Spills out here to Urquhart. He's kicked two goals here today. His kick was smothered. Fronfelder, he's kicked one goal. Kicks it. Goal ward. It's floor. He was looking for that celebration, Basil. <laughs> he loves it. The yeah, celebrator. Double cobra was yep. ready, wasn't it? It yep. was right in front of that Wodonga Terrace as well. He would have turned and said, <laughs> how good am I? Who's better, Mark Lou or Fraunfelder in the celebration department? Oh, Fraunfelder. He's the best celebrator in the comp. <laughs> Wasn't celebrating much then. It was through for a minor score, and the dogs have broken away. They've got the ball on the far side here through young Ainsworth. Arks his back. His kick in board, looking for the leading lanes there of Wilding. Only found Lee Masters working super hard in defence for Yarrawonga, taking an intercept mark. So 61 plays, 21, 40-point lead to the Pigeons. Fronfelder has got it here on centre wing, chips it in the direction of... Dylan Conway wanted to play on and then slipped over. He probably should have been called to play on then. Ran into a bit of trouble. Has to get rid of it. Hand pass it to Willie Wheeler. Been a bit quiet since quarter time. Kicks to half forward. Here's Conway. Fires it on goal. Is it going to work its way back? It is. A wonderful finish from Dylan Conway. He got there in the end. He was working hard on centre wing. Pushed forward and snuck it through for a steal on goal today. A bit of a goal against the Tide, Dan Vaccaro. Yeah, it was. Wodonga had all the play there, and Conway was able to finish. He's had a really rough day at the office too, Conway. I think he's been um, he's been kept quiet by a number of those uh, Wodonga defenders that are rotating on and off him. And, uh, yeah, a really good finish there by Conway. He only needs one step, and he's able to kick it. He kicks 50 metres with his eyes closed, Conway. Lee Masters, again, he's been fantastic all day. He's up to the 15 disposals, just off half back. Everything gets started through him, and it gets finished with Bailey Fraunfelder kicking into their 50. So they've got a great little system going, Yarrawonga. So on the Harvey Norman betting scoreboard, 67 plays, 21. Third quarter action for STY medals. We've played around 20 on the Macca's time clock. Willie Wheeler's numbers, Dan Vaccaro. Willie Wheeler's only had the one disposal this quarter, so that takes his total to 10. I thought he had a really good um, first half. He didn't get a lot of the footy, but his use was fantastic. Um, but slow start this quarter. Here he is again, chasing after the Sharon. Kennedy Gibbons, did well. Gibbons has been great, boys. He's had five disposals already this quarter. 
Wheel up, beautiful hand pass to Kennedy in space. Beautiful drop punt finish from young Benny Kennedy. But what about the hand pass from Willie Wheeler? That's a steel line set up of the day. A great finish from Kennedy. The Pigeons get their 11th, Chris Mitchell. Yeah, well, Gibbon sort of wheeled it forward from the centre clearance and then uh, Wheeler sort of kept running and, uh, and got it back and fired off a beautiful hand pass to Kennedy. And how about the finish? Uh, on the run, uh, just never looked like missing from about 45 out yep. directly in front. But uh, a beautiful running goal and, and great uh, teamwork from the Pigeons. Just such a great polished team, Yarrawonga are, aren't they? They not, don't necessarily have to have their influence on the game all the time, but their skills get them out of trouble so many times. And that's why it's so important to have such classy midfielders and outfield sort of players like Bailey Fraunfelder and Masters coming off the halfback as well. Remember the name, young Ben Kennedy. He's going to be a star in the making. Once he puts on a bit of size and plays some senior football, watch out for him. Wheeler kicks it inside 50, and it's all dogs. Greenhill, one of those. Chimes up, takes a mark, wants to kick it to the far side. Awful place to be, riding the sun at the moment. Brown sends it to half forward. Irvine up against Wilson, spills out here to BT. He's been okay. For the Dogs today, in his second game of the year, Dan Vaccaro. He has. I think he's presented really well, Beatty. I don't think he's probably had a lot of the footy in the marks that he would have liked, but he is influencing contests and he's halving contests, probably better than what Wilding has today. So I think he's been the better of their big forwards for sure. Boundary throw in 60 out from the Dogs' goal. Here at the John Flower Oval. There's a whistle here. Is that one going to be thrown back in, Chris Mitchell? No. Can't see. That yes, it is. Enough. I'll put you under the pump there, Chris O. Doing a wonderful job on the boundary for Waters. So it is going to be thrown back in by the umpire. 52-point margin. Yarrawonga look like they're home and hose for the minor premiership. We'll go around the ground soon for 40 winks. Mar just left the football behind. Gill was brought to ground level by Coburn. Winning a high free kick there was Jorgensen for the Dogs. Just beyond his distance. Bit of a hush over Martin Park here at the minute. Both sides just in sort of preservation mode here at the minute. Nothing really to gain. Yarrawonga look like they're going to finish on top. Here's Cassidy. Called to play on. 55 from home. It's a big launching effort. And it's punched through for a minor score from Isaac Cassidy. The Dogs 3-4. The Pigeons 11-7 on the Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. We have played 22 minutes on the Macca's time clock. We have, and we're just going to go around the grounds. 440 winks as well. Uh, so Wang Rovers 65 to North Aubrey's 22. So that there is a bit of a free lesson. Myrtleford 39 to Raiders 38. What a game we have on there at McNamara Reserve and Lavington 28 to Aubrey's 54. So Aubrey running away with it too, Panda. Not sure if you're aware, Chris Mitchell, but we were brought some cakes and some sandwiches by the lovely staff here at Wodonga. What are you going on about, Dan? I didn't want to tell him. <laughs> well, well, you have been eyeing off these scones and jam There's donuts. And that scone is, that scone sitting, is looking at me. It is. With you all told the me because I can't cream, come up and eat them with you. <laughs> whipped cream, jam, egg, and the egg you sandwiches. What, I'll say there's a bit of carrot cake at the bottom, and I'll save you that, mate. <laughs> scraps. Yeah. There will be scraps. I think he ate all my potato cakes and dim sims at oh, halftime. Talking rubbish now. Did Dan Vaccaro. 52, 51-point margin to the way of Yarra. Grubber down the ground for Maury. Jorgensen head over the footy. Left it behind. Gibbons watching bounce it on his left here. He's done it once. Yeah, he did. Beautiful, beautiful kick. Beautiful left foot kick inside 50. Finds Lee Williams. 45 out. 45 degree angle. Rennie likes his chances here, Leroy. Always looks like he wants to pass it off, but we know that he's not really trying to do that. Not a great kick. It lands in the arms of Casey in the end, who's given away a free kick. He doesn't even know it yet, Matt. <laughs> He's got no idea, Chris Mitchell. No, neither did uh, the Wodonga play. Is it Jewel? Yep. Yep. Uh, so, he's, yeah, he's going to relieve a bit of pressure, but needs to just get it out of the danger zone, I think. So Williams fired it on goal. Casey marked it, and he gave away a free kick. The Dogs kick it out here to the far side. Ainsworth, who's been good today, fires it on to Kitching. Not able to... Find a teammate, Irvine puts it on the boot. Casey works his way to the front, takes a strong mark. This time in front of Sam Jewell, and he'll go back 20 metres out, slight angle. Yeah. Well, it was nearly the exact same uh, sort of marking scenario, wasn't it, with Jewell uh, on, on up his hammer there? But a uh, great mark there by Casey. He's so good above his head and going to go back for a shot at goal. Yeah, this, so, is, this is just a product for repeat inside 50s for Yarrawonga. As good as Wodonga's defence has been, you just can't hold that sort of pressure, and Yarrawonga got another shot on goal from Casey. So he's... The two behinds today, Matty Casey. 
as Dan Vaccaro takes his headset off and doesn't even take a bite of the scone. Straight, straight, straight down. down the throat <laughs> like a pelican <laughs> on St Kilda Beach. Matt Casey with a beautiful drop punt kicks a goal. The Pigeons go to 12-7-79. The Bulldogs 3-4-22. 25 minutes played. Macca's time clock. This is where you normally go to the stats. Man, oh, he's back. He's right. He's gulped it down, Dan Vaccaro. I don't know what you're talking about, boys. I haven't touched any of it yet, but what a great finish there by Casey. And he's been pretty good all day. He's presented. Um, he's probably been the better ones out of their forwards. I know Conway's been really quiet, and I know Williams has been kept really well by Charlie Morrison, who apparently was going to have 13 kicked on him today by our very own Panda Escott. But, yeah, Yarra Wonga running away with this one. Quite easily, do we want to see a response for Wodonga or are they going to keep some of their boys on ice come the last quarter, Panda? The flattest special comment we've heard from the year, I think, from <laughs> our man Dan, who's trying to fight off jam and whipped cream down the throat. Should see the smile on his face here in this commentary box at the moment. The Chris Pelican. Mitchell. I, he love, has I love that name. The Pelican, I like <laughs> it too. Maybe we found a nickname for our man Dan. Jeez, that was yeah. good. That was amazing. <laughs> you going to save me any, Daniel, or...? I told you, mate, there's some carrot cake here. <laughs> I don't like is. carrot cake, so you can have it. Oh, Lovell just misread the football there. Wasn't able to mark through his hands. Here's a chance for Mimo. Tried to get past Wilson on centre wing. Beautiful little fancy tap there from Spateri to the advantage of Bradshaw. Kitchen got it on the boot really quick. Not to the effect of a attacker, and it's out of bounds on the full. The Pigeons win it back. They're in cruise control here. 12 7 79, the dogs 3 5 23. So we cast our minds forward to next week, Chris O. It's going to be uh, a wonderful first week of September and sort of that awkward moment here where you probably mm. don't, you sort of just want the siren to go, really, don't you? Yeah, well, who would you take off, I guess, and who would you rest for either side? You know, you don't want them to get injured heading into, into uh, what's going to be a more important game uh, next weekend. Well, I think your big ones are probably your Charlie Morrison's. You don't want him to get injured. That's the last thing you but need. But you need him to still um, do a good job on Williams, though. That's exactly right. Bailey Griffiths, you, you big ruckman. You need a big ruckman, and he's been pretty good today. He's probably another one. But um, you want him to probably play as much footy as he can as and that, well. And that's exactly right. So it's a little bit of a hard one. I'm just sort of rattling off their big players that you would take off in a perfect scenario. But um, there's not a whole lot, and there's a lot out at the moment. Koopman wins the footy, hand passes to Williams, who's got 20 metres on his nearest defender, kicks in the direction here of Wilson, who played well, he on, play on didn't he? marked it, played on, and he ran into trouble. And then he said, no, I don't want to play on. <laughs> his kick, which was goal-bound anyway, has been marked by the man who just continues to take the ball at the highest point and get, him, get himself in wonderful positions. Coburn who will line up for goal number three as the three-quarter time siren goes, Chris O. No, it was pretty funny by Wilson, wasn't it, really? He, he marked it, he played on, and he said, no, I don't really want to play on, but he, he'd already played on. The umpire said play on. Uh, he skied the ball, and then the, the, one of the smallest players on the ground marks it again. So Braden Coburn has kicked a point. They were celebrating. They were celebrating. Goal. It's hit the post. He's done a Ben Keys. It's through for a minor oh. score. Yarrawonga 12-8. The Dogs... 3-5 on our Harvey Norman betting scoreboard. Big margin, a 57-point margin here at Martin Park. Three-quarter time. We'll be back after this here on 3 and A's m Live where you won't miss a thing. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a crumbed barramundi fillet served with chips and dill hollandaise from just $22. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Pain or injury can stop you from living life to the fullest. Aubrey Wodonga Private Hospital specialises in advanced orthopaedic services and offers a full range of care from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation. Get back to the life you love with our support.
Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where students come first. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules, Carlton Zero. Adroit Insurance & Risk, your local insurance advisor. Able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. GoTafe is hiring and we want you on our team. Flexibility, professional development, generous remuneration and a staff well-being program are just a few of the great benefits we offer. If you have a passion for your skill or qualification and you're looking for real work-life balance, then GoTafe is the place for you. GoTafe is leading. Inspiring. Hands-on. Flexible. Fabulous. We have dozens of trainer positions and corporate roles open right now. Get in touch today. AY, we're your home of live sport. Every weekend we bring you the best live broadcasts of the Ovens and Murray football and netball. Listen this weekend on your radio or the 2AY app. Time from a beautiful looking Martin Park in Wodonga. Just forgot where I was there for a second, Dan Vaccaro <laughs> on 3 and A's R&M Live. Fourth quarter action, not far away from getting underway for APCO Wangaratta. Who were some of the Optus quarters best in that third quarter, please, Dan Vaccaro? It's hard with Yarrawonga, but just because there's been so many, it's been an even output all game. Um, I think Gibbons was probably their best. He only had six disposals, but he was so influential. He would have probably had three clearances as well. I thought he was fantastic. Um, again, Matt Wilson had six disposals that quarter. Um, Josh Mathy, six as well. So those two guys have been the best for Wodonga today by far. Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. I think he's probably at the Yarrawonga huddle at the moment. He is. He's writing down a few little notes as our man Chris Mitchell. Who are some of the leading stat leaders for 40 Winks, please, Dan Vaccaro? Uh, well, the leading stat getter for, Matt, uh, for Wodonga is Matt Wilson. He's had 25 disposals. Josh Mathy as well has been really good with 18. Adam Jorgensen's had the 14 across half forward. I feel like his influence has been really good and an evenly poised uh, little selection here for Yarrawonga. But M Gibbons had a 17. Cam Wilson, 16. I think Willie Will has been good to only have 12 disposals. Lee Masters at 15 as well, and Fothergill was at 13 and a goal as well, Panda. Around the grounds quickly, 29 to 80, sorry, 23 to 80 here. Uh, the Rovers 72 to 23 over the Hoppers. It's a thriller between the Raiders and Myrtleford in the battle for the spoon. The Raiders 52 lead the Myrtleford Alpine Saints 41. <laughs> And Aubrey 60 over Lavington 41. Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Yeah, just quickly had a bit of a uh, listen to both. Geordie Taylor, pretty happy with that quarter. Uh, said the ball movement was much better and wants them to stay positive. He did a few structural changes as well. And Stevie J um, doesn't want them to sit back and get to get to the next contest. So uh, that switch, uh, they want to make a little bit quicker too, which worked to effect at the start of that third quarter. He's not looking overly concerned, JT. He just strutted up here and he's chewing his gum. No, he wasn't too worried about it. I don't think he's... Uh, I don't think he's too worried. I think he's got one eye on next week, just quietly. That's what you can do when you sew up September action nice and early, and that's how important early wins are in your season. So here we go, fourth quarter underway. 80 plays 23. Here on 3 and E's O&M Live. Yarrawonga will face well, no one next week. They've got a week off. They go forward here. Conway not able to mark. Inside 50 here for Yarrawonga. Matt Casey over the boundary line, and it will get thrown back into play. So 
Gary Wong will have the week off. They will claim the minor premiership. And then we're going to see Aubrey take on the Magpies in a qualifying final at the WJ Finlay Oval next week. And we're going to have an elimination final between the Rovers and the Dogs at the Norm Mins Oval across the road. A festival of footy in Wangaratta. We'll find out who's going to be playing each other in the A-grade netball as well. Harding fires a hand pass off towards Greenhill. Just able to get around a tackler. His kick hangs a long time in the air. There's a whistle against Batiri, Chris Mitchell, boundary side for Waters. Maybe tunneled him under a little bit. It's uh, Masters free kick. So Masters fires it straight back in. Casey not able to mark. Roving beautifully. Fothergill snapping tight in the pocket and missing. Looked he, beautiful. Deserved a goal, didn't he? It did. One goal, two for Nick Fothergill. A minus score. Yeah, the Yarrawonga 12 9 81. The Dogs 3 5 23. Dan Vaccaro, Josh Mathy racking up the 40 winks. Just got another one there, Josh Mathy. So that takes his so to 19. I think he's probably been Wodonga's best alongside Matt Wilson today. Ainsworth is biting off a little bit more than he can chew there. Willie Wheeler marking it. Good leap, though, from Ainsworth defensively against Koopman to knock it over the boundary line. For a throw-in, 55 out from Yarrawonga's goal. It's that, the, the awkward period where you just do it, not want an injury no. whatsoever for any side, would do you? Would well, you be tempted to take Gibbons off at this stage, considering uh, how well he's done already and uh, take him fit? But I guess he's got next week off anyway, doesn't he? Yeah, so. I sort of feel like you'd almost just take him off anyway. Just to avoid any injuries or anything like that, he's probably not one of those players that you just need to keep pumping minutes into. I think at the moment he's just he's done enough today and just get him off and... Put him on ice. Williams. Mm, don't, don't mind it either. Fires it on to Fothergill, who's been wrapped up in a strong tackle. Fothergill's been good. He's at 15 disposals and kicked a goal. He looks probably the most dangerous sort of small forward. Uh, for such a big forward line, Yarrawonga, he's a real important player for them. Of course, Dan and Chris will be choosing our Waters player of the day as well. Be a tough one. It will be. And our ultimate fastener MVP votes. Of course, Cam Wilson leading at the moment as the dual stick weaves through traffic. Kicks it out here, looking for Jorgensen. It might be Mimo at ground level. A few more suggestions would be good too, boys. <laughs> yes. oh, mate, it's I'll pretty I'll open, you, I reckon, I'll at the you moment. In that space. We need you to do something, Chris. <laughs> I really like Gibbons' game, to be honest. If he plays out the game, I think he's probably right up there. Yeah, I also like Coburn's game. He kicked two goals and he's provided a pretty good link option out there. So here's Jewel in defence for the Dogs. Not a great exiting kick. Ryan Bruce marking at half forward. He's got options of plenty in the channel. Finds Conway directly in front. We know what a booming kick he is, Chris Mitchell. He'll line up here from 40 metres out directly in front. Yeah, well, if he kicks through this, it'll be in a perfect position. But, uh, yeah, Ryan Bruce, he's a great uh, user of the footy as well. But uh, too much space there for Wodonga's defence to leave open for the Pigeons. He's been pretty well held today, Conway. He did kick a beautiful goal last quarter. Looks to be getting this one through. He's going to send this to a post height for mine. Conway's a big you'll, kick. You look the solar panels on those houses out the back there at the Elm Street end if he gets onto this one. So, Dill Conway. It's across the face in the end. Oh, and he's right about the post height, though, Pen. He's a big kick. I've got him for one goal, one, Dylan Conway. So, Yarrawonga blowing a few chances here. 12 10 82. The Dogs 3 5 23. Scoreboard down here as well in terms of the minutes. In this at Martin Park, we have no idea how long has surpassed in this last quarter. And Panda also doesn't set his own time stop clock. Watching here because no, he's hopeless. It's oh, just yeah. here purely for a memento. So let's just start no, it now. Shocking. I'm going to say oh, about three minutes. Maybe <laughs> Dan, you get the uh, the stream up, and we'll be able to watch the time clock down in the bottom corner there. Jorgensen and Mathy fighting for it. Miles Jewell giving it back to Mathy. Not much space to work in. Haven't called his name a lot, Miles Jules. He's been very, very quiet today. Wilding winning it here. That is Wilding. And Tyson and Mimo on ground level and centre wing. Les Cheesley side of Martin Park. It's been a wonderful day for football right across the region and netball sport in general. Good crowd here at Martin Park as well. So about 1,000 people, Chris Mitchell, would you say? Yeah, at Maybe least, yep. 1,200? Yep. Yeah, I'd say 1,100. I reckon around. 900. Okay, so we're around the 1,000 mark in a grants. <laughs> Is that what you'd say, Dan? Four minutes gone on the time clock as well, which you didn't set. I don't get me stream up. And Thank you, mate. I just no don't, just all, don't mate. want you to watch Hawthorne versus Fremantle. Well, I don't want to watch it either. Looks like the Hawks are down. That's all right. Makes me happy. Miles Jewell hand passes it to Bradshaw. Not able <laughs> to find him, and it's a boundary throw-in right on the far side of the 
Martin Park, right next to the old scoreboard. Not doing much this game, boys, is mm. it? No, let's nah, make it nice and it exciting. <laughs> what have you got for us, Mitchie? <laughs> Not a lot. It's pretty quiet <laughs> on the boundary. Some, give us something. <laughs> it's pretty quiet on the boundary. Yeah, how about you? We, you Go for us, a streak or something. Tell, tell us a story, of... Daniel, that you uh, you said pre-game. Uh, we can't tell that on air, I don't think, that well, one. You could, you could PG it. Inside 50, well, Yarrawonga goal. <laughs> Conway has <laughs> given away a free kick here up against... Mitchie Deneen. Uh, Mitchie Deneen, a very good relative, Mitchie Deneen. That's where he gets his sporting prowess from. From, from you? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I find that very hard to believe. Good cricketer as well, Mitchie. He's got the bright orange boots, asking a lot of questions, isn't he? Probably eats, I reckon, about 8,000 calories a day, that man. <laughs> I've never met a man that eats more than Mitch Deneen. Struggles to go an hour without a feed, Mitch This Deneen. is coming from a man who did knock down a scone with no bites before as well. Mate, I'll tell you now, Just he, swallowed it. he puts me to shame, Mitch Deneen. But unlike me, he works off the food that he eats. Doesn't He's mind wielding pasta. onto Kitching. He's too far out to score. Lots of pigeons down in defence. Ryan Bruce coming over and punching it across the boundary line for a throw-in. Too many occasions today would Onger have gone forward. Chris Mitchell, they've had no one home. Yeah, and a little bit too deep. I mean, we said it before, we would have loved Tommy Johnson being, being up there, but they do need a target. Uh, yep. Wilding's done his best, but uh, the delivery hasn't been great either. Yep, I think Wodonga will be on the phone to Huddy Garoni all off-season uh, between us boys, I think. They really need a, a really good key forward, and he'd be one that they've got their eyes on, being a Wodonga man, and he's playing some good footy at VFL level, but he will come back one day, I'm sure. Josh Mathy winning a free kick in that stoppage as well, and he's going to line up for goal number two. Probably 25 metres out on a slight angle. It's been another wonderful day for Josh Mathy. I reckon he's used the ball very well today. 20 disposals for Josh Mathy. Your man, Dan. And he lines up and he makes no mistake here. He's got two goals. Not sure about that celebration. We're going to have to find out a little bit more. The dog's 4-5. So far in the last quarter, it's three inside 50s apiece uh, and one mark inside 50 for Yarrawonga. Nick Fothergill, he's had his hands on the footy. He got a goal and he's got the two touches early. Mick Gibbons as well has been really good. He's up to 19 disposals. Cam Wilson, 17 disposals. Willie Will hasn't touched the footy yet this quarter. Liam Masters is up to 16. He's just been great all day off the halfback line, Panda. So 29 plays, 81. And our work locker, Wenger, had a scoreboard. Seven minutes gone in the last two, Panda. Fourth term for Apco Wenger, Adder. The best service station in the galaxy. Inside 50 here for Yarrawonga. Heaving it out of there was Morrison, but it's going to come straight back on the far side. It's been marked down low by Fronfelder. He's been great today, Fronfelder, too. He might be a little sneaky, you reckon, Mitchie? He's in the running. For the gill, we'll continue this conversation. Fires it back to the top of the goal square. Oh, big fly over the pack there from, I think it was Miles Jewell. And there's a whistle off the ball here. It's a Free kick going to the way of Casey Marr, I think, for a bit of a dump tackle on Lee Williams. Frustrating day for Lee Williams. It started out so bright, kicking the first goal for the Pigeons. The oh. seventh minute mark of the first quarter. He needed 12 <laughs> to equal Calmore, 13 to win the Doug String outright. You have it's been one of those days. Put the moz, the him, moz on him. You came oh, in here absolutely. with wobbling that. Ugly head of yours going Shit. now, boys. He's going to kick 13 today. Don't worry about it. Take it to the bank. And what's he done? He's got an absolute free lesson from Charlie Morrison, mate. So get back in your box. <laughs> we do know that you do love Charlie. He has had the better of Lee Williams today. But Yarrawonga have had the better on the scoreboard. We're going to throw in 55 around from Yarrawonga's goal. And we're going to have the week off now next week, Chris O, they had the mm. round 17 buy. Now they're going to have a buy here and potentially another buy a couple of weeks later after that. Yeah, well, they'll play the winner out of Wang and uh, Aubrey, Aubrey, won't they? So that'll be a cracking game uh, next Saturday at uh, the WJ Finlay. So the winner will play the Pigeons and the winner of that game will go straight into the grand final. So this was a big one for Yarrawonga to win and they, they came out all guns blazing to start, didn't they? Not if you ask Gus. He wanted little. them to play another game next week. Well, they might play a practice match I'll or a scratch what, match of some sort. They won't be playing anything. So Koopman goes inside 50, playing in front there and taking a mark was Koopman in front of Isaac Cassidy. And Koopman here is too far out to score. He likes a lead in the pocket offered from Conway. And Dylan Conway marks broadcast side. You'd say 35 metres out in a pretty tight angle. 
Looks yeah. like he's not passing this off at all. He's gone back straight away, and he's probably been better as the game's gotten on, Conway. He probably looks like he's presenting a little bit better and taking a few more marks. He needs to probably go up another level in September for Yarrawonga, and they will be a real big weapon going forward. You've got Casey playing good footy, and if this guy's on, look out. Of course, winning a VFL Premiership, I believe, with Port Melbourne in the VFL. So he knows all about September. He's kicked one goal, two today, though. That was to the skinny side. Yarrawonga, 12, 11, 83. The Bulldogs, 4, 5, 29 on our Harvey. Sorry, work locker, Wangaratta scoreboard. Fourth quarter for Apco, Wangaratta. Ten minutes gone in the last two, boys. Blake Pandoresco with you, Dan Vaccaro, Chris Mitchell, and Willie Wheeler. Lights out kick, finding Coburn. Inside forward 50. Coburn plays on, no one on the mark, and kicks a goal. That's Braden Coburn's third. That was too easy. Jordan Taylor won't like that. He's been outstanding. Uh, three goals for Braden Coburn. Also, uh, he's been great overhead as well. So he's in the running for player of the day too, boys. There you go. Chris Mitchell, now man, not giving anything away at the moment on that boundary. But no, nah, fantastic finish from Yarrawonga, and they're going to get the job done pretty easy. I think Wodonga are going to be, you know, as weird as it sounds, probably a little bit content. They just want to get the game over and done with, get through unscathed and, and continue on to next week. I think it was I who actually may have said Braden Coburn. <laughs> for a shout as our Waters player of the day. Fronfeld it, taking a nice defensive mark. It was brave, switching the footy straight away. Urquhart not able to mark. Well done there from Cohen Ainsworth, finding his left foot and a beautiful kick to find Oscar Wilding. Hasn't well, been Oscar's day, but he's going to line up 30 out directly in front. What a player Cohen Ainsworth's going to be, boys. We're seeing a really good footballer unfold right in front of our eyes. He's been a pleasure to watch. This second half, he's just been fantastic, and his ball use just looks like he's been in the system for years. Panda. Yeah, well, he's fast. He's got composure, and uh, he reads the game pretty well too. And he just put that in the in the uh, the leading lanes for Wilding to take. Hasn't kicked the goal yet, Oscar. He has now, and you'll love that. Through for a steal line goal that a contender. Thirty five plays eighty eight. He winks over here. Obviously, the score is 5 5 35 to 14 10 94. Wang Rovers 79 plays North Albury 24. Murderford 42 to Raiders 53. What a game that is there at McNamara Reserve. And Lavington 42 to Albury 67. Panda. Keep us up to date, please, with the Raiders versus Murderford scoreline. Of course, we are on 90.1 FM in Murderford. So our fans down there will be. Tuning in to find out how the Saints go. Of course, playing up against the Raiders for the Battle of the Spoon. Both teams entering that one with only one win for the season. Myrtleford with their one win against the Rovers. Raiders with their one win against the Saints. Ball on the far side here. Martin Park. Casey's kick was smothered. Harding wins it back. Hand passes it to Kitching. Fothergill has wrapped him up holding the ball. So a free kick here to Yarrawonga in the centre of the ground. Fothergill's numbers, Dan. Nick Fothergill has had 15 disposals. This is going to be his 16th for the day. I think he's been pretty good, Panda. He's been good around that half-forward line. He gets up the ground better than most small forwards in the competition. Is he in your team of the year at half-forward, Nick Fothergill? Yeah, he's in the team of the year, for sure. Yep, he's a walk-up. He's kicked 38 goals. Hard to leave him out. Where does that get him in the Doug Strang race? Is that top five? He is six in the Doug String race as we speak. There you go. So he's the num he's the small forward of the yep. team of the year. Easily, he's had a sensational year. This guy's so is this guy. Yep. So is this good guy as well. Listen. Yep. Not too many half forwards averaging a goal and twenty disposals a game, and that's what yep. he does every single week. Kicks to half forward. Oscar Wilding over his head. Kitching's been okay today. Left foot kick inside fifty. Awful bounce. Masters just runs it over the boundary line. Throw in. We've played around. 15 minutes on the Macca's time clock. Fourth quarter action for Apco Wangaratta. On our work locker Wangaratta scoreboard, it is a 53-point margin to the way of the Pigeons. Yep, thanks, boys. You're a bit good salty. Job. I thought you did a good job there, Panda. You're a bit salty wanted, about the Hawks, aren't you? I just you? wanted to keep listening to you, mate. You were doing so well. You're a bit salty about our Hawks. You're wearing your Hawthorne retro hat. No, that's all right. The boys will be better for the run. 
I can't Better really than you talk. blokes. No, Jesus. I, I cannot talk for the, at all. For those listening and, and watching at home, Panda goes for Essendon, which is just an embarrassment at the moment. So. Yeah. Moving well, on. Neither, but none of our teams made the finals, guys. So. All three are pretty poor. But yeah. you have a lot more to cheer about. Chris Mitchell, considering you do back for Geelong, you've had a very happy life. Spatiri pushed off it from Irvine. He's going to wear a free kick. Is it going to be downfield or where he's no, kicked it? He won't not. want it downfield, <laughs> Noah. <laughs> he wants the ball in his hands. You can pencil this in, Panda. Pen- you can oh, pencil, pencil it in. in. He is tied up against the pocket. Pencil a, it in. Broadcast from a bit side. Of distance, 35, 40 out. Pencil it in. Kicking to the hospital end. He's won a free kick. Kicked a ripping goal in the third quarter. He's going to run around, snap it, and kick it to the skinny side. And he's going to stay stuff you, Dan Vaccaro. You've mozzed him. Through for a minor. Was never kicking that. Yeah, disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've, now you're off him. Disgraceful, mate. Now he did let you down. He's a soccer player. Goes to Tottenham. Yeah, that wasn't Used to it. losing. Used to not having trophies. Tottenham. Empty trophy cabinet. Coming from a man that hasn't really won too many in the last 10 years. Well, you've got to play in, sport to win them. In so. Manchester, <laughs> Manchester United. have got the most Premier League titles. Cassidy on to Gil. Mimo was crunched there by Ben Kennedy, who mowed him down. Irvine wants a free kick for holding the ball. Ash Broughton, umpire not buying it. Enjoying a good bit of territory here at the Dogs and managing to lock it in the forward 50, something they haven't done a lot of today. 88 plays, 36. Three goals to Coburn, a couple to Urquhart. Interesting goal kickers for the Pigeons. And then the singles to a few others as well. The Dogs have only had the three goal kickers today. Two of those going to Josh Mathy. So singles to Matt Casey, Fothergill, Fronfelder, Jess Koopman, Wheeler, Williams, Conway and Benny Kennedy, who's going to be a star for Yarrawonga. Plays footy down in Melbourne in the APS college system. Ainsworth, left foot kick down the centre wing. Maury goes and picks it up, fires it off to Lovell. Really good tackle from young Harry Kitching. Tell you what, those biceps, I'm not sure what a bigger his or Spateri's, but that was a great tackle. He has got no arm definition whatsoever, young Kitching. No, but he's all right. He's tough as nails, Kitching. He's about 40, 40 kilos ringing wet, I reckon. Fires it inside forward 50 in a wonderful intercept mark there. Best by in the business. Lee Masters, a Mawson's concrete mark of the day. Switches it straight away. How have you rated Lee Masters' year, Dan Vaccaro? Slow start. He's battled his injuries. <laughs> yeah, he's probably had an interrupted season. Definitely not. Um, at the peak of his powers where he probably was last year where he won the Morris medal. But he has been good when he needs to be, and I think come finals he's just going to step it up. I think he's had a, a – there's a better team in Yarrawonga this year, and I think people like Bailey Fraunfelder that have gone back and those sort of players have given him a chop out when he has played. So, yes, he individually hasn't had the performances, but he's been good, not in doubt. Look at that delivery inside 50 there from Wilson. Working super hard and finding Conway. Almost directly in front. Lots of leads on offer. Ignoring most of them. Chipping to Ryan Bruce, who's standing all by himself. There he is. One of the greats. One Ryan of the Bruce. greats. 45 metres out directly in front. Chris Oak? Yeah, well, they could have raffled it. They, he didn't know who to kick it to. There was that many options. So Br- Bruce was uh, the most direct. He was uh, in front from uh, about 40 metres out directly in front. And we'll go back and have a shot at goal. They've got 13 on the board so far. So Ryan Bruce into league the last couple of years. He sneaks forward, he loves kicking goals, and that is a wonderful finish. The Pigeons get their 14th. Ryan's got his first of the day. Dan Vaccaro. Bigger than 50 metres as well, so whoever gets a mark around that half forward line almost can go back, so it's an amazing... uh, Amazing thing to have when six of your forwards can kick 50-plus metres as well in the o and and they all definitely can, Yarrawonga, and they've been fantastic today. I think I've said they've won this game purely on the basis that they're just so much more skillful than Wodonga at this stage. 94 plays, 36 on the work locker, Wangaratta scoreboard. Pigeons have been home since about the 15th minute mark, I reckon, of the opening quarter. Ben Kennedy dribbling it to the goal square. One-out contest here between Deneen and Conway. Deneen does well to tap it to the advantage of Morrison. His kick just stays in, does it? Finds Miles Jewell. It does Jewel. stay in. I think um, Mitch and Deneen's game has actually been quite good. I think he's played on Conway for most of the day, and I think he's really almost gotten the better of him, if that's the case. Conway's been quiet for his standards, so Mitch and Deneen's had a pretty good scalp today. Here's Cohen Ainsworth. 
He's, he's had a be. really good day. He's going to be a star, Cole Ainsworth. Finds Riley Gilt. I'd, lo I'd love to know his age, Panda. Sorry, if he's around that 17 years old. I don't even know if he's 16. I think he's 16, 16 in fact. Out. Ainsworth. Jorgensen played on and wasn't so aware of his surroundings. Koopman swooped on him. He fires it inside 50 for the Dogs. Tyson, another youngster with a lot of poise. Kicks it straight down the middle with strength marking is Conway. Too strong there for Morrison. Open inside 50 for the Pigeons. Willie Wheeler has snuck out the back with push. strength and he's given away a push. Yep, he just sort of played behind. Uh, not sure who it is. is it Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy. Cassidy. Uh, just played behind him. Uh, gave a clear push. The umpire was right on the spot and he's given a free kick. Jorgensen's been really good this quarter, boys. He's up to the 19 disposals for the game. He's had a good game. We'll go around the grounds and find out a score between Myrtleford and the Raiders. If we can, please, Dan Vaccaro. And Absolutely, just a Panda. little highlight as well between Lavington and Aubrey. So it looks like yeah, uh, Raiders are going to get it done, boys. 59 to 42 must be mm. late in the fourth quarter there. So what a win by young Raiders. That is an outstanding win away from home. Rovers have given your boys an absolute touch-up, 91 to 30 as well. Uh, and Lovington, 48, plays Aubrey, 69. Fothergill wrapping up Jorgensen. And a stoppage inside 50 here for the Arawonga Pigeons. You'd probably say they've all gone a script, except uh, Myrtleford's game, wouldn't you? Pretty much. I think I called it before the game that North Aubrey would get a hiding, and you all <laughs> laughed at me. No, we did. It's a good call, Dan Vaccaro. It's a good confidence-boosting win for the Wangaratta Rovers as well. I believe Will Christie will not be eligible to play next week. Mm. Ryan Hebron as well won't be eligible. So there's two big outs for their lineup in that elimination final against the Dogs. And you'd expect the Dogs to regain O'Sullivan and Driscoll and a few others. Koopman, yeah, hand passing it here to Cam Wilson. His kick across the face is out of bounds on the full. But 24 minutes played on the Macca's time clock in this final quarter for Apco Wangaratta. That'll be 50. It's a 58 point margin to the way of Yarrawonga. Lee Williams is on the bench, guys, with lots of ice on his leg, lower Ooh. calf or shin. Or we'll off. keep you updated. Very interesting. There's your first question to Stevie J in our post game show. Here's the dogs on the far side through Mar. Nick Beatty's got it. Wants to come back inboard. Working hard there was Jorgensen. Hand passing it on to Matty Wilson. Able to get past the tackle. Kicks it to the top of the goal square. Wiley down there defensively. Running onto this one. Noah Spatiri kick off the ground. I reckon it's got there. A Shane Warne bounce, if you don't mind, from Noah Spatiri. It was a wonderful soccer effort. He will watch that a hundred times tonight <laughs> on the O&M Optus TV, Dan Vaccaro. He's been quite good today, Noah. He's got great skills and very, very small arms, just like Panda. Well, he's a Tottenham man. He would have uh, felt a bit of Harry Kane, I reckon, about that uh, gold poach. Oh, he just sort of... Stretched the leg out, got a bit of a toe poke, and it dribbled over for a, a major. Yeah, he loves his football. Spitzy loves Harry Kane and loves Ange Ball as well. Harry Kane, of course, not there anymore as well. He's going to Bayern Munich. Going to Bayern Munich. To win trophies. Winning a trophy at Bayern Munich is like fishing with dynamite. Come on. <laughs> Too easy. Like winning them at Man City as well. Mm. Matt Casey winning a free kick out of the middle of the ground. And he's going to fire Yarrawonga into attack once again. Taking a bounce, big Matt. Kicks to the pocket. A bit of a wrestle on there between Deneen and Conway. Roving it beautifully. Koopman or oh, Banana from the boundary. He can do the amazing. Not on this occasion. Bradshaw did well. Wartman in hard, working hard for Wodonga. Here's Cade Brown. Still in his own deep pocket. Cactus Brown. He's been pretty good this year, Started Cactus. Started okay. He's probably played the most ones games he's ever played this year, Cactus Brown. And one of the great nicknames, too. It is a good nickname. Cactus. Cactus Brown. Better than yours. Well, you don't really have one, do you, Dan? I've got, I've got a lot. <laughs> Probably aren't radio worthy. No. <laughs> no. I like Pelican. I think that's I like it. that, too. Both of you can shut up. Jewel Stick. That's a good nickname. The Stick. Had He's it on his own. No, it does now. Uh, warm up top. Just Jewel Stick. Wilding.
firing it on here to a teammate. The dogs go forward once again. And another downfield free kick. Chris Mitchell for Waters. Was he going Spitzy? Yeah, I'm not sure that one was for, to be honest. Spitzy wants it. He has He's got it. no chance that he is passing this off. <laughs> Matty Wilson was in the vicinity. And Spitzy said... Get out of here, Matty. I'm lining up for goal number three. Spitzy. He's been good all day, and he's he's definitely not passing this off. I think he'll struggle to make the distance, to be fair. Oh, Jesus. how about that for a dagger? <laughs> what gave that away? The frame of 30 kilos? or <laughs> So, Noah Spiteri for goal number three. He's going to kick from probably 30 metres out. Slightish angle. Gets the distance. Oh. Gets the goal. Well done, Noah Spiteri. He'll be coming on pregame every week now. <laughs> that is... Oh, no. So he's well and truly done his job as a small forward. Um, I guess other people haven't sort of come to the party in that position. So he's been a fantastic link up from that half forward to, to deep in the forward where Nick Beatty and Wilding probably haven't moved a whole lot um, today, to say the least. They haven't impacted contests like you would hope from your forwards, but Noah's been there when it's counted. So 94 plays 48 on our work locker. Wanger at a scoreboard as the siren sounds here at the John Flower Oval in Wodonga. And it's a 56-point win, sorry, 46-point win to the Yarrawonga Pigeons who are going to have the week off next week and claim the minor premiership in the SSNA Ovens and Murray. They've been the best team all year and they're going to face the winner of Aubrey versus the Wangaratta Magpies while Wodonga are going to face the Rovers in a do-or-die cutthroat elimination final next week. There is week one of your finals in the SSNA Ovens and Murray. A professional win, Dan Vaccaro, to the Arawonga Pigeons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely nailed that call there, Panda. A professional win. They did it basically on pure skill. I think Wodonga were really decent for sort of a half. Um, they just weren't able to convert on the scoreboard, and then they just fell away to a much better opposition in Yarrawonga. They're by far the best team, Yarrawonga. Stranger thing has happened, however, in finals. So it'll be good to look, it'll be good to look forward um, to the next game. Chris Mitchell down on the boundary. For Waters, just walking out there, trying to get a little bit of sunshine. Dan Vaccaro, telling a couple of the kids in front of us just to get out of the box as well. Yeah, no, no, not a fan, mate. they got to keep their distance. We're the high rollers, yeah? Well, you, you definitely think you are. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all, Dan Vaccaro. So three goals to Braden Coburn. I thought he was outstanding. Braden couple, Coburn was great today. A couple of goals to Jordan Urquhart. Yarrawonga had the 14 majors. While for Wodonga, it was two goals to Mathy, three goals to Spatiri, and a single as well to Matty Wilson. Chris Mitchell is down on the boundary with, I think it is, our Waters player of the day. It's Braden Coburn. Yes, good spot, Panda. Uh, it is Braden Coburn. He was outstanding today with three majors and sewn up the minor premiership with that win, mate. Uh, yeah, obviously it's good to finish on top. Um, yeah, but... Real stuff starts now, I guess, um, moving into finals. So, yeah, be good. Was it a hard one to get up for knowing uh, it didn't really matter, I guess? I mean, you are probably uh, confident you could win it and minor premiership sewed up. Some people were saying it would be good to have a game next week, but uh, you'll avoid uh, Wangaratta. Uh, no, like, it's easy to get up. Like, all the boys are keen. Um, like, our goal was to finish on top. Um, so, yeah, we went into the um, game hoping we finish on top and finish with a strong performance going into finals. You're outstanding today, three majors, but uh, your marking overhead was fantastic as well, mate. You must be pretty happy with your form heading into September. Uh, yeah, obviously it's good to get on the end of a couple, but yeah, obviously I'm not known for my contested marking, but anyway, good to get on a couple, so yeah, anyway. Well done, Braden. Enjoy the win, mate. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Braden Coburn, who was outstanding, our Waters player of the day. Three goals. We weren't taking his numbers, I think, Dan Vaccaro, but he was wonderful today, and He's a good option. He holds his width out there on the wing. And I tell you what, they just got so many options all over the ground, the Arawonga yeah. Pigeons. Yeah, they do. And Braden Coburn's another one that, you know, he's sort of a really good role player for Yarrawonga, but he's not a huge ball winner, but he was absolutely fantastic today. I think Mitchie made the right decision. He'll be probably safe to say he'd be probably our three points in the MVP as well. He was fantastic all day today. He was indeed. So Yarrawonga will enjoy a week off. They'll be able to rest up any particular sore spots, and they will enter September very fresh. Top of the ladder. Next week, we'll have Aubrey taking on Wangaratta at the WJ Finlay Oval. We'll preview that one in our post game.
Madonga will face the Wenger at a Rovers. First time the Dogs have played finals. A wonderful achievement since 2009. I was in year seven, Panda. Were you? Yep. Do you remember it? I do vaguely, yeah. We'll do a bit of research during the week. A bit of more of a successful time for Wodonga back then, and they got a good opportunity to win a final in 2023. We're in the Arawonga Pigeons room as we speak. And of course, we'll catch up with Steve Johnson as well. Stevie J. He's great with us. He's great with his time, Stevie J. He'll no have doubt a, he'll have a can of, yep. he'll have a blue... Uh, hey! Entering September in some seriously good form of the Arawonga Pigeons. A big win over the Wodonga Bulldogs, 94 to 48 on 3 and E's O&M Live. Don't go anywhere, a post-game show for Apco Wangaratta on the other side of this. And on O&M Live, you won't miss a thing. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a crumbed barramundi fillet served with chips and dill hollandaise from just $22. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Pain or injury can stop you from living life to the fullest. Aubrey Wodonga Private Hospital specialises in advanced orthopaedic services and offers a full range of care from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation. Get back to the life you love with our support. Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where students come first. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. GoTafe is hiring and we want you on our team. Flexibility, professional development, generous remuneration and a staff wellbeing program are just a few of the great benefits we offer. 
If you have a passion for your skill or qualification and you're looking for real work-life balance, then GoTafe is the place for you. GoTafe is leading. Inspiring. Hands-on. Flexible. Fabulous. We have dozens of trainer positions and corporate roles open right now. Get in touch today. AY, we're your home of live sport. Every weekend, we bring you the best live broadcasts of the Ovens and Murray football and netball. Listen this weekend on your radio or the 2AY app.